Did you know Instacart delivers more than groceries? You can get tech, beauty, office supplies, sporting goods, and more, all delivered right to your door in as fast as an hour. So whether you're cooking dinner or your phone charger is cooked, you can save yourself multiple trips by shopping over 1,000 stores in the Instacart app. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first order. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Nobody likes keeping track of a wallet full of credit cards with complicated rewards categories. And BECU members like Heather don't have to. With this card, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about it. I just use it and pay it. It's pretty simple. Keep things simple with the cashback visa from BECU. No more confusing categories. No more blackout dates. Just 1.5% cash back on every purchase. BECU. Power in people. Member compensated for participation. Cash advances and cash lot transactions do not qualify as purchases. Contact BECU at 800-233-2328 for current product and rate information. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. And uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but of course I have got the convention hangover. So yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was very hard to fall asleep last night. Yeah, uh, I, 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 it's just my voice because uh, you crazy kids wanting to go into all these loud places, and of course I got to speak a little louder, and I'm screaming my head off, and I don't know that I'm doing it because I think I'm just trying to hear myself and hear people and. Then I wake up like this. Hey, how are you? I like how you blame us for that. Us crazy kids. Yeah, when you I were do. the one that was talking to literally every person at the convention. <laughs> every had nothing si- to do with that. Every single night when the rest of us are shutting it down, who are we saying goodbye to at the hotel bar, which is no longer serving alcohol because it's past bar time? That's right. <laughs> it's BJ Shea who's busy making some random female radio personality cry each night. Yeah. Actually, I made a couple of dudes cry too. You guys did not Good see that. Good for you. <laughs> I saved them the embarrassment and told them that uh, that I would not do that. Um, You're expanding but, yeah, your reach, sir. That's I'm not good. kidding, and I'm not kidding. There was one dude. I was like, "We need to shut this down because I, I I I feel like this isn't a good look for you." And I, I'm, I can't <laughs> <let this happen. laughs> wow. Yeah, I was surprised myself because usually, you know, no 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 dude sticks around that long to even listen to me. So no. Uh, they usually find this, a, one yeah. of uh, other one of us, and they're like, "Hey, can I come tag along with you guys instead?" <laughs> yeah. That's usually what happens. They're yeah. like, well, "Yeah, we get me the hell away from that guy." Uh, so that's yeah. So we have the hangover this morning, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll obviously talk more about our adventures, um, which were some adventures, and you guys missed a giant adventure. Actually, I can't believe I was part of it. I usually am you know, old and don't leave the hotel, but. Uh, it was, you had the ultimate adventure, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> Danny is, he's, he can't even, he can't even, Danny can't even believe it. He missed, nope. we, it, would have been the best, it would have been the best time of his life and he missed it. I we know. missed it by minutes. By minutes. He really did. Yeah. yeah he really did. <laughs> uh, and we will talk about it. Um, but there is, I, I, you know, there's some, there's more important stuff that happened, uh, really that, that some of you may have found out while we were gone via social networks. But for a lot of you, this could be the first time you're hearing about it. And it's really, 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 some bad news. It it, it really sucks. Um, yes, and that is the the Rev, the Reverend in Fuego, uh, Justin, is no longer on our show, and uh, this uh, you know Steve and I, boy, uh, when we talked to each other because we were notified very close uh, to the same time, and uh, when we talked to each other, the sudden the sudden nature of this was sh- just shocking, um, and. This was a decision that was completely out of our hands. And as you can imagine, Steve, I mean, you know me, uh, when you and I spoke again, you're the more reasonable one. So you had to listen to me just go, well, you know, every wonderful word in the dictionary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. About like a, a person that's been with the show for 16 years. And, um, I mean, obviously no everyone the knows the, the love we have on the air, but behind the scenes, I mean, that, did so much so much i mean made my life easier so when that when when that news came out and 
it was so abrupt and so sudden, and there was absolutely nothing. No minds could be changed. It was just one of those things, and nothing that he did wrong. Uh, that's please, like that's the most important part. It was like the rev did absolutely nothing wrong to warrant this, and it's just shocking for for all of us. But here we are. The show must go on. Yeah, we it sucks we, because we. I think everyone. I think we. I can speak for everybody on the show that there's nothing but love for the dude. He's a friend in addition to being a coworker, and we've all stayed we're kept in touch with him after the fact, and, and have nothing but love for him. Yeah, we uh, look. You know how it is. You just know how it is in the world of business uh, in the year 2022. Um, we can't say anything, and that's just the business of 2022. And but, like Steve said. He did nothing wrong. Uh, lots of love for the Rev. I, I, 16 years. He was, he was a young dude. He was, you know, uh, a very, very young man came here. I, I, you know, I took a shining to him because I really saw a lot of myself in him. We had similar attitudes. You know, sometimes we could be the guys screaming and yelling at everybody while everybody would be looking at us. What is wrong with you two? Um, so I, I really took, I saw him like a, as a mini me, uh, and to, and to see him grow and to see him, think he knew who he was and then grow beyond that and then of course you know meet his wife through the show uh, and, you know and be it when just as a girlfriend then get to be wife and then all the things that he did um uh, you know help us with the it really help us he did the bj Shea geek nation podcast hosted the damn thing and put his heart and soul into that um this is this is devastating on a lot of levels to all of us and to me and um and we know to you as well so this is very pain. We, we, we if, you, if you're upset and you're in pain, we get it because that's we're going through this as well. And um, it was tough being at that convention. I mean, I love the convention and everything, but it was like, you know, you know what it's like. It's like going sometimes like being at a funeral because like, you know, somebody who we love is not there. Uh, and, and if I know like the day before we're going to get on the plane to go, yeah. it's not. Yeah, not, not the best way of no. Now. Not that there's ever a good way, and I, and and I know he's in the res out camping, and I'm I'm hoping that he's getting his mind off of everything, and obviously you know everyone show him some love if you if you keep in touch with him because he's just an awesome dude. Yeah, and please remember that you know uh, give him a lot of love. This is this 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 sucks, and sometimes we get angry, and but then what happens is is the per even though you think you're helping the person, there's just you, there's more and more anger surrounding them. What you know what I think I would want is just people being really like kind towards me and complimentary towards me, and just telling me how much you love me at, at a moment like this. That's all I would ask you to do for him when you when you reach out to him on social networks or whatever. That would be really that would make us feel good. Um, yeah, Steve, I, I don't know if I told you, but this is when, when stuff like this happens and it's you, know, you don't want this to happen, but you can't do anything about it. Um, I reached out to our old producer, Brad, because that's what happened with Brad all those years ago. And he and I have stayed friends and I called him on the phone and said, can we have lunch? And he says, OK. And I told I said, look, I want you to, you know, here's what's going on. And I go, you and I have maintained a friendship. I want to know. What would you have wanted me to do? I want to be able to, you know, keep the same kind of friendship that you and I have with Rev. What, what would you want me to do, you know, because it happened to you, you know, what, what would you want me to do? I just want to do the right thing by this guy. And, um, so it's, I was really happy that, you know, Brad was super helpful, which, you know, I, who's ever said that about Brad? Nobody. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, his own family doesn't even say that about Brad. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot of love for Rev. So, um, yeah, we're, we, we, we're going to do a show. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to smile. But I, I, I definitely, you know, got this guy in, his heart, in our heart. And I, I hope he does great things. I hope we hear that, like, he owns the world or at least he's really, really happy with his life. That would make me, that would be so awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah, there you go. And in um, other bad news, yes, Danny still is on the show. That, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is cheese, man. That might even be the bigger tragedy, actually. Uh, what for, a for, loving... For, for, well, I'm yeah. sure we'll get into it yeah, later. That, There's uh, a certain female radio personality. Not from here, though. I would have loved to have seen Danny just disappear from the planet. Oh, really? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, I don't think I... I don't even think I know about this. Oh, yeah. Do you I? made her cry at some point. Yes, you did. Same oh, person. that's right. Yeah, now I know about this. She really is okay. having a bad run with our show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what, though? As much as I would like to, you know, give Danny a hard time, that, that, that is the dumbest reason. So that we will talk about that, too. The, I mean, I'm on Danny's side, and it's hard to be. I'm like, I don't want to be on Danny's Not side, me. but I'm on Danny's side. Oh, really? No, oh. I told her. I was like, he is a jerk and, a, wow. and, and an a-hole for oh, doing wow. that. I heard yeah. him. He yeah. actually did say this. <laughs> yes, I did. Multiple people came up and told me. You know what? That's, that's Steve. 
<laughs> Steve just stirs that pot because yeah. he, you know, he gets his popcorn and just wants to see the drama. I was like, I don't even know if I could be around that guy anymore. And then, like five minutes later, I'm having a <laughs> shot with Danny, and she saw that. <laughs> what the hell is this? Guy? That's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's really good to be back because when we go to stuff like this, man, we get energized. We meet great people. You guys don't know the story about how I got us all. I almost got us all fired. You have no idea about that story either. Jeez, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Did I almost get us all fired? And, uh, well, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, Steve, you know me. The way I, oh, the worst possible moment for me, the worst possible human being in the worst possible time with the, oh, yeah. Good stories. We got them all for you. So uh, we're going to do that. Uh, also, we are going to answer a big question because a lot of people I know want to know why. Why would a man attack a Papa John's employee with a pizza paddle? This is probably the biggest question out there on the Internet right now. And, you know, Steve, he's going to tell you. He's got the mix report for you at 617 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. We're Jet and Black. For over 80 years, we've been your locally owned and family operated appliance store. Shopping here is just different. You see, it starts with our appliance experts who are experienced in jobs of all sizes. So if you're remodeling your kitchen and looking for luxury or shopping for an entire apartment building and need durability, our team is trained to find the appliances you need at competitive prices. Judd and Black, your hometown appliance store, online at juddblack.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. We've done it again, man. We've got together with Mary's Place because, well, you know, back to school time. It is here. And kids, they need some kicks. And we're going to get those kicks for those kids. That's how it is. They need sneakers on their feet, Steve. Oh, man. Yes, they do, BJ. We have a goal. We're hoping to raise $20,000. That will put about 200, hook up 200 kids with brand new sneakers. In fact, 50 bucks will buy a brand new pair of sneakers for a child, 100 bucks for a teenager. And we're not just handing them a random pair of sneakers. Like, they'll get to go to a store and pick out the sneakers that they like and that they choose. So that way, it's like they're getting something that they absolutely love. And thanks to the Rockaholics, BJ, because they're really stepping up. We are almost to 50% of our goal. We're at 42%. Woo! Thanks to 48 different rockaholics, and we've uh, so far raised over $8,300. Thanks in part to people like Michael Coker, donated 200 bucks. Yeah. Lydia Katzel donated 50 bucks. Casey Stockwell, 200 bucks. Harold Swales donated $69, joining the 69 nice. Club. A bunch of anonymous donors as well. The rockaholics, you guys all rock. Yeah, man, every dollar counts. And look, if money is tight, you don't got a buck, that's cool. Just share on your social networks because some of your friends maybe will help out these kids and get those kicks on their feet. All the info, you know where to go. Make a donation, KISW.com. Well informed on the issues of the day? Nope, not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Migs Report. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to Beacon Plumbing, Heating, Septic, and Mechanical for giving us the major report. And today, enjoy yourself a peach. It's Eat Up Peach Day. Oh. I thought you said a beach. I was ready to jump on a plane yeah. again. I mean, well, you live in West Seattle. You have a beach right at your front door. Like I said, Ish. I was ready to jump in my car and drive to El Cairo. Okay. <laughs> and uh, for all you Little Feet fans, this is a really big day for you. That's an old person's band. That's one of their bigger songs. Called, I think it's an album or one of their famous songs called Eat a Peach. Oh. oh I thought you were talking about like people who have small feet. Uh, well, well that's like, what they named it after those folks. That oh. was uh, yeah, that was an inspiration. I was like, is there like a group of people that have small feet that like need to gather on a beach? Yeah. I was very confused by the entire. <laughs> I think my brain, and I'm not a huge Little Feet fan, but I feel like that if you're a Grateful Dead sort of fish kind of person, I feel like Little Feet fits right into that kind of genre of music. And feet is spelled F E A T. Yes. Not yeah. if you do the other thing. I typed in Little Feet Beach, and it gave me a lot of pictures that people usually pay for. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because it's not a big feat, Steve. This is just a little feat. A little, little feat of accomplishment. Yes. Yeah, I was never a little feat fan. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's an acquired I mean, taste for a lot of folks. and The band. You might be too, you might be too young. <laughs> I'm not one to judge oh, if your feet are large oh, or small. Like, that okay. doesn't bother me. You still like little... Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't care what size your foot is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They each their own, BJ. Yeah. But you never heard anybody say, hey, little feet... Large, that's never happened. So, you, you know, you, you, you know, wow. your self esteem is just perpetuating. Yeah. Hey, also, it's National Tooth Fairy Day. So, uh, 
Oh, really? I don't know. What's the going rate now? If, uh, Danny, I, we have yet to have, Tatum has yet to lose a, a tooth. So we, have, and so we don't have to, we haven't broached that subject of how much we're supposed to leave under her pillow. $5. $5 a five, tooth. $5 a tooth. That was the, Lily lost two, or her first two teeth in a row, and she got $10 and a toy from the tooth fairy. $10 and a toy. Yeah. Wow. Man. And then she I, bought toys with her $5 or $10. And I was like, wow, this kid has it way better than I did. Well, you know, maybe do that. Or also you could maybe enjoy one of the greatest movies ever created. That is The Tooth Fairy starring Dwayne Johnson, BJ. Oh, <laughs> our new best friend. He's our oh, new best I, friend. I, I knew you were going to find any way to get him in there. And there it was. The tooth Some would say, great. he's now my brother. <laughs> uh, yes, he say. said it himself, in fact. Yes, he did. Really. On Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> worst. I mean, that That's was the, the top worst story. Uh, yes, is that really the? We got our. We got when we went to Chicago for our radio convention. Shout out to Danny, Vicky, Sarah, and Joe. They hit the road while we were at. I, mean, I was trying to learn about radio in one of the panels. They skipped the panel, BJ. Yeah. They and did. what did they do? They went to the liquor store and they got because we've been we were trying the entire time in Chicago at No Luck. CVS didn't have it. Uh, different liquor, like a different grocery store, didn't have it. Uh, but they finally found another liquor store, Terramana Tequila, the Rocks Tequila. Brought yeah. it back to the convention. I took a picture of it in the conference that we were in. <laughs> tagged him within minutes, like under twenty minutes. He responded, BJ. And he doesn't respond a lot on his Twitter, so I thought it was kind of funny that he responded to this. And it just said, enjoy the mana, brother. I can't believe it. And now we're best friends. (laughs) I really... You have tried to, like, connect with him via social networks before, and it's just never a response. Yeah, so I, I, you know, thought for sure it doesn't matter what you do. He's... It doesn't matter what you do. He's going to not connect with you. I I saw Steve's face. I legit thought he was going to stand up and scream in the middle of the panel. Yeah, I was... I'm glad I sat in the back. (laughs) He screamed screamed behind me, Danny, because... I I screamed, BJ! Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I could hear it. And you know me. I uh, I don't hear very well, and so I'm like, Did, what the hell? You know, I turn around and then there's Steve all excited as if it was his first Christmas. And then I saw why that damn rock to And all I could think was the other radio people around us because Danny comes in with, uh, I mean, he looked like he was like drinking off the streets because he came in with a brown paper bag. And like he's pulling the, the liquor out of it, making noise. And some people looked over and what is he pulling out? A bottle of tequila. People yeah, are probably yeah. like, that BJ and Mig show, they like to go hard. Yeah, that was uh, that was a great branding moment for us. Thank you, Danny. Yes. You're welcome. But it was great because in my head, I thought we were just going to have to like annoy the living hell out of yes. The Rock and keep tweeting and tagging as we continue to drink throughout the night. He, on the first tweet, he first responds. Tweet. Yeah. One and done. One and that, done. Uh, <laughs> we were riding high after that. I, we yeah. were riding so high and, after that. That really was like, yeah, you know, I was feeling pretty good about myself in life, and then that happened. <laughs> and we have to say, very delicious tequila. Uh, Fantastic tequila. Right down and smooth. See, he does a nice thing, again, on social media. So, you know, you all know about it. You're all talking about it. And, again, it feeds right into why I hate the guy in the first place. Like, he can't do a nice thing without being on social media well, what's he it? supposed to do? Track down my number and send me a text? Uh, yes. You know, it really? I mean, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, you would love that, actually. He's supposed to drive to your house and go, thank you, brother. Send us one of his uh, cheap meals of sushi and a box yeah. of Terramano. We'd be happy. In. Yeah. Let's go, Rock. Unbelievable. It was the best part of the event. Uh, so many great parts in that convention, but that might have been my favorite. Yeah, the that highlight. Was, uh, that was your highlight. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this guy. He's in Maryland, and he's in a little bit of trouble because, well, his name's Herbert. He's 40 years old, and he went to a Papa John's, and apparently was very pissed off at the employees at Papa John's. So what did he do? He jumped over the counter and started chasing one of the employees, a 26-year-old dude around the store, starting wow. to hit him. Wow. With those metal pizza paddles. Oh, oh. that's, uh, I mean, some, that might be a fetish for some people, but I'm not sure this kid wanted that. So about the employee, I mean, smart thinking on his part, his name's Robert. He grabbed one of those pizza spears and oh. he defended him and he stabbed the dude, the Herbert dude, with it during the attack. What the hell? Imagine being there while all this is going on. Oh, it would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah some of that didn't get speared. So, any guesses on why you think? Herbert lost it and started attacking the employee. Oh. Because you know there's always a good reason behind it. It's a good it. game. I like this good game. Papa John's. Papa oh, John's boy. pissed off the, at the employee, attacked the customer with one of those pizza paddles. All right. And they got stabbed oh, with a pizza spear. Man. Wow. Ooh. Oh, uh, okay. What do you got? I think because they always, I don't know how often you order Papa John's in the past, but they give the little garlic butter sauce. Maybe they forgot that in his in his pizza. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm allergic to correct answers. <laughs> there we Is that go. really it? You nailed it. 
Oh, he didn't to... get his garlic sauce and his Italian peppers with his pizza order. Oh, my gosh. They're, like, known for that. That That's garlic really sauce good. is amazing. It's so good. Yeah, you know, I was really going to fault the guy, but you take away the garlic sauce, I'm leaping over the counter, man. I'm doing it. My other guess was they put pineapple on his pizza. No, no, no. He had to lose Oh, that, that would have diffused the okay, situation, where, Daniel. Where, yeah, please. Where's the pizza paddle? Somebody hit Danny with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, congratulations to a Washington State man by the name of Tom Sturry. He's 82 years old, and he just accomplished what might be one of the most ridiculous life goals that he's had. He's been doing it for 17 years. He spent about 2,500 hours doing this. He just made his one millionth basketball free throw. Nice. Wow. The fact that he even kept track and thought that was a thing. No, yeah, he would. He basically had a goal where he he wanted to hit a hundred free throws every day. He spent on the basketball court, and at one point, he even had a streak of hitting two hundred and twenty-two shots in a row. Uh, so he's Whoa. not Shaquille O'Neal when it comes to this. But how about eighty-two years old? In fact, here's Tom talking about it. I feel really good about it. Yeah. I do. It's great to be able to perform pretty well under pressure. It's a big number. That guy's in good shape. How old is he? 82 years old. Wow. Damn. I, I, I really wish I looked that good now. Yep. <laughs> wow. A million uh, basketball free, free throws. I, I, mean, I would lose track. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess that's when you write it down. Yeah. yeah. yeah Maybe. That's, that's probably, yeah. <laughs> you know, see, that was a, a very inspiring story. Oh, because his name's Tom Sturry. Oh, jeez. Yeah, thank you. Well, See, congratulations, I came back, Tom. I came, back from, yeah, came back from the convention with all the good stuff. See all those great ideas I got? Yeah. I come back from the convention with the Mariners. I'm a little bit of a schneid. Oh, no. Actually, they've been playing pretty well. Dad. I mean, it's so funny. The emotional roller coaster of being a Mariners fan because, you know, they look great. What are they in Texas? You're like, man, look at these guys. Yeah. This is going to be a great run. Then they lose two out of three to Oakland. You're like, man, wait till next season. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding, of course. But they lost 5 3, uh, losing two out of three. Tomorrow they're in Washington. They're taking on the Washington Nationals. So hopefully things will be turned around and they'll continue their winning ways before meeting up with the Oakland Hayes. And yeah, the Washington Nationals yeah. suck. They're still in the driver's seat. Yes, yes. I mean, and, and but gosh, yeah, they, they, man, they just, they just got to keep it going. That's all. They just, come on, guys, do not falter against these teams. How about the storm? Talk about keeping it going. They swept the Washington Mystics uh, in the playoffs, so they're moving on to the second round. Uh, Sue Bird, oldest player in in, uh, the, in the playoffs, oldest player to record a, a playoff double double uh, in a, in a playoff game. So it's like she just continues what? to play great. Wouldn't it be awesome if they win the championship in our final season? Yes. Right? That would be yeah, the most amazing. I, I, you know, especially because, yeah, you, I mean, going out on top, what a wonderful way to go. Yes. Up next, they're going to be having a series up against the uh, Las Vegas Aces. So hopefully they kick the Aces. Yeah. Kick their Aces. Kick their Aces. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's an inspiring story. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Sounders, uh, they ended up tying the LA Galaxy three to three. We watched that game in uh, Danny's hotel, and it was three to three. Yeah, yeah and it looked well, like they were about a, to win. And wow. They gave up a goal in like the last couple of minutes in the oh, extra play, oh. the extra time. Oh, that is that's wow. Sorry, sorry to bring that up again. There, it's okay. I was ready to drink an entire bottle of tequila after that. Yes. <laughs> also, today's a great day to drink a bottle of tequila. It's going to be eighty degrees and sunny. Ooh. Thanks to Kia up y'all for giving us the mix report, and that's what's up. As what's up? Hey, do you? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Do you think you have what it takes to beat Migs? All right. Well, how about you calling right now? That's how you would do it. 206-421-ROCK. This is your chance of beating Steve. We're playing Beat Migs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast is brought to you by bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagne, who's ready to answer your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, is it true that if you file for bankruptcy once, you can't file again? Even if you filed bankruptcy before, you can almost certainly file bankruptcy again. Different types of bankruptcies have different time limits between filings. In Chapter 7, full bankruptcy, you can only file Chapter 7 once every eight years. However, you can always, almost always file a Chapter 13 case. Chapter 13 cases can be filed uh, immediately following a Chapter 7. They can be filed immediately following a prior Chapter 13 case. Chapter 13 is a reorganization plan, so there will be some type of monthly payment, but it's based on your budget and your ability to afford that payment. So Chapter 13 is an option in almost all cases, uh, even with a prior bankruptcy filing. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.
Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle, presenting Pain in the Grass. Yes, it is back. Three big days on Labor Day weekend. This is and a man, few weeks away, BJ. Oh, I know. Dude, I mean, really, just a couple of weeks away, like you said, from... Awesome. I cannot wait to see bands like Breaking Benjamin, Alice in Chains, that's, and Bush. That's all going to be on Saturday of Labor Day weekend. Friday, you got Incubus and Sublime with Rome. That's going to be badass. And then Sunday, wrapping things up with the Glorious Sons, Queensryche, George Thorgood, and then Sammy Hagar is going to be taking the stage. Yeah, man. Don't forget, we still got a limited number of tickets left for those BJ, uh, the BJ and Migs party with the first ever BJ and Migs Weenie Toss. Ooh, speaking of which, what? Wait, whoa, just whoa. showed up in the mail. So the winner oh. of the so the Weenie Toss was based on a dumb thing where a person broke a, a world record where they were able to throw X amount of weenie, weenies from a, a, for a far distance and then someone caught it with the bun. So we're going to be doing that just to see who could ever throw it the furthest and catch it. And we'll go from there. We'll figure it out. We, All right. But we'll we do have this. trophies for the winners for both days that we're going to be doing our BJ and Mix party. And now, thanks to Rucky the Seawolf, the mascot. Okay. Also, a.k.a. Red the Chicken Man. All righty. We have the championship belts. They're mini championship belts. And they are glorious. Oh my God. Oh my god, they look am- they Dude. look amazing. They look so good. Whoa. They've got the BJ Migs Weenie Toss logo on them. I can see if I can take up the, the wrapper wow. on it, but dude, someone's, sweet. someone's leaving with this bad boy, brother. Wow. Check wow. that out. It's not cheesy looking at all, like no. a kid's costume. This wow. is legit. Yeah, some company undisputed oh, belt set up. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> It's oh. so great. It's got the, the Weenie Toss logo on it. It says Undisputed Wiener or Winner. That's it. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, dude, this is pretty amazing. That's going to be, I mean, that's going to be worth the price of admission, really. Yeah. Oh, and we got great. two of them, brother. All right. One for each day. Someone's going to be walking around painting the grass. If you see them with this white championship belt, you know it's because they're the Undisputed Wiener. <laughs> You know, really, I didn't know how those would turn out. Red, you did a great job, bro. They're amazing. Yeah, that's fantastic. Love that. Wow. They got the BJ Miggs logo on the side plate and then the Pain in the Grass logo on the side plate as well. We might have to, I don't know, uh, we might We might have to have this done a lot. I think we might have to. Just make championship belts for everything? For everything. Yeah. I, I think, you know what, they should just do that for, like, like, your Little League and all that. Whatever you're doing for sports, give them the championship belts right. instead of trophies. It's way cooler. Those are really well, cool. Well, it's also a little more expensive. Well, hey, aren't the kids worth it? Well, all especially right. if Rucky's paying. Yeah, definitely the kids are worth it when Rucky's paying. All right, so you want all the info about painting the grass? Well, you know where to go. K-I-S-W.com. Let's play B. Victoria. Who is ready to play beat mix? You know what? After a few days in Chicago, my brain is definitely not ready to play beat mix. <laughs> yeah, <mates>. no. <laughs> I was trying to have conversations with people. Like like my girlfriend last night, she was asking me questions like, I can't form sentences right no. now. My no. brain is just fried. Yes. Yeah. We put in work. Yes, we did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, let's see how this goes today. Uh, today, we actually have Charles from Puyallup, your neck of the woods. Steve, are you there? I am. Hi, Charles. Okay, now, Steve, you can get the hell out of here. Oh, thanks, Pete. <laughs> thanks, Vicky. Let's go to Pete. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know <laughs> who you are. I thought you were going to say Vicky. Vicky. Yeah. Hey, Vicky. <laughs> That's what my little brother calls me, Vicky. Yeah. Vicky. Anywho, for those playing at home, Charles, you have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you'll only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's do this. Vexillology is the study of what? One more time. Vexillology. 
You can. Fabulous. Denim is the official fabric for what U.S. state? California. Yes. Nice. What kind of sauce is typically served on Eggs Benedict? Hollandaise. Yeah. According to Greek mythology, who was the first woman on Earth? Uh, Venus. No. Um, Aphrodite. Nope. A pass. Uh, a story of one's own life is often referred to as what? Or is referred to? Autobiography. Autobiography. Yeah. Who played the title character in the sitcom Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Oh, man. I, I don't even remember Pass. Pass. The female actress co-starring along Dwayne Johnson in the 2021 movie Jungle Cruise. Who is it? Oh, oh Pass it. man. Pass. The first Woodstock happened in what year? 69. Yeah. 1969. One, That's two, three, four. All right. Well, four is a, is a number. It is a number. But Steve's... Uh, I know for a fact Steve's... Right. So we'll see how well he All does. Right, yeah, you know what? There's still a chance. How are you doing, Steve? Me and Joe were just talking about how hard it was to fall asleep last night. And how hard it was to wake up this morning? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes. Of course. <laughs> they both go without saying. But yes, we're both in the struggle bus. We're just kind of uh, reconvening about that. I mean, Charles has a shot. Uh-oh. Ready? Oh, yeah! Vexillology is the study of what? Blood. No. Vexes. No. Veins. No. Denim is the official fabric for what U.S. state? Washington. No. Oh, damn it. Um, California. Yeah. Nice. Ooh. What kind of sauce is typically served on Eggs Benedict? Hollandaise. Correct. According to Greek mythology, who is the first woman on Earth? Uh, Hades. Nope. Aphrodite. Nope. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they did hook up though. I, um, oh, what's Liz- Lizzo? No, Lizzo. Uh, yes. A story of one's own life is referred to as what? An autobiography. Correct. Who played the title character in the sitcom Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Mm-hmm. Melissa Joan Hart. Yes. The female actress co-stars uh, who co-stars along Dwayne the jo- uh, Dwayne Johnson in the 2021 movie Jungle Cruise. Who is it? <laughs> Dwayne the Jock Johnson. <laughs> That's something else. Oh, uh, Jack Black. No. Damn it. I don't know. Pass. All right. Uh, the first Woodstock happened in what year? 69. Correct. Two, three, four. You squeak five. by with oh, five. Oh, 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 wait, hold wait, wait, wait. on. Uh-oh. I would like to do because I wanted to do this. Okay. I don't think Steve was right about the story of his own life. That question. I don't think he was right about that. Oh, Autobiography. Oh, that's a yeah. I don't bi- think that's the answer. Biography. What did oh, he don't say? give him the answer, Jesus. Well, it's too late. I mean, I, I can't do it now. I, <laughs> well, she could. Oh, I mean, crap. I, I think know, if she told you you were wrong, you would have had a chance. I was going to give you one chance to get it right. What was the question again? Uh, a story of one's own life is referred to as what? And I, it's not a, 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 that's, oh, well. No, one's own life. It's an autobiography. Well, you know they actually are both right. Never mind. Now, I suppose you could argue both ways. Because an autobiography is you write the own story of your life, whereas a story of your life is a biography. The autobiography yeah. is if you wrote it yourself. Yes, and that is the question. But yeah, oh. they said owns life, so that's no, about you. You're writing it about yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. I mean, it's I not guess someone else yeah. wrote the story about their all someone right. else's life. My brain I mean, hurts so bad. This is yeah, not well, cool, BJ. Not on a Monday you before this? seven. Because I want to play my song. I'm only arguing so I can play my song. Yeah, that's but not all. after we just spent no. many brain cells hey, burnt man, in this Chicago. This is the time. I got to take advantage of you people while you're down. I got to get. I got to oh, get when yeah. it gets good. But all right, fine. I acquiesce to Vicky's power. All right. Well, Steve, you did get five out of four correct. All right, five to four. Thank you. My brain is also fried. All right. Well, sorry, Charles. You did not win, sir. No. Deuces. Bye, buddy. Oh, yeah. That is a bitter taste. Bitter taste. Uh, For the ones you did not get correct, vexillology is the study of flags. Oh, flags. we should have known that. I bet Sheldon said that every time he did fun with flags on The Big Bang Theory. And somebody mentioned it in a dirty cartoon I watch. Uh, well, okay, of course. Uh, hold a pause. Yeah. <laughs> of course. What dirty cartoon were you it's watching? It's called Crossing Swords on Hulu. It's a yeah. Seth, uh, Seth Green show. Oh, I thought it was like a... Like a, a, a porno? Click on a thumbnail Mm-mm. kind of. Oh, okay. I mean, they're little cart... Like, Toy characters, much like Robot Chicken, and okay. you often see them naked and doing dirty things. Oh wow! So yeah, it's a dirty show. 
Yeah, uh, Vicky, Vicky tends to go for the very adult animation shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, according to Greek mythology, who is the first woman on Earth? She has a very, very popular box. Pandora. Oh, Pandora. really? Oh. Pandora is the first woman, according to the Greeks. Mm-hmm. I didn't know she was the first one. Wow, okay. She and a the very fam- popular box, though, yeah. is just said. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That's a, well, I mean, Everyone likes to say, talk about it. And, she's uh, not wrong. A, isn't it I on mean, Lake City Way? <laughs> yeah, no big, I mean, she's, she's not wrong. It's, it's a, and it's a box that nobody wants to really have unleashed upon the world, either. And the female actress who co-stars along Dwayne Johnson. I remember this one. Emily Blunt. That's oh. it. Yeah, that's the one. That's John Krasinski's wife. How do you forget her? Especially since The Rock and I are now brothers. Why? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. You know, I'm happy I have it in writing. Involved. Yeah, I have it and in writing. And screenshotted and posted everywhere. Actually, you do have it in writing. That's the I sad don't thing. I think I got more people texting me, tweeting at me with excitement for something that happened to me that really, at the end of the day, it, 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 it does no consequence in my life. You know what I mean? I've had like other things that have been like, I think I, it was almost up there with the birth of my child, like the amount of <laughs> people yeah. that were reaching out to me to congratulate me on The Rock tweeting back at me, which I thought was like the funniest thing. What do you think? Do you, I mean, because you say that, it, that that he doesn't respond much on, you know, on Twitter. Because look, he is a big enough star with a ridiculous schedule that... I would think he'd have somebody running his social media, and I wouldn't fault him for that. I fault him for a lot of things because oh, of you're not going to rain in my parade program. trying to make me think that an assistant wrote that. I'm going to. That's what I'm wondering. I, I, you I, might be I, right, I, but I'm going to pretend it was. <laughs> rock. I, I was really going to say I think because he doesn't, they don't respond much. Whoever it is, that it might have been him. You know, I mean, based on like, yeah, I wonder if he has somebody that he just tells, hey, say this. But like, I. I looked at like his tweets and replies because he responded because we posted a picture on our social media of of the Taramana te- tequila that we had at the radio convention, and he just said he enjoyed the Mana brother and with like a couple of emojis and stuff. And he doesn't typically respond a lot to people uh, like as I go through. I mean, every once in a while he will, but not like all the time. So I feel like we just caught him at the absolute best moment mm-hmm. because it was within like twenty minutes that he responded. And yeah. And it was just like, I, th- I think we just got lucky. It was super fast. Like, yeah. the, the fact that it happened within, like, because, t- you know, those, that's one of those things you put out there and you wake up the next morning and it's like, oh, nice surprise. But it, <laughs> legit, you just refreshed your page and it, there it was. And there was a response. And I mean, because the dude's got like 16 million followers. So he's got to be getting blown up all day long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to think that, you know, he was in the middle of a gigantic sheet meal, picked up his phone like we all do when you're having some chow mm-hmm. and said, I'm going to retweet this guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tweet back at him. That's my brother. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we are brothers. Yeah. After all. Yeah, you are. I mean, I mean uh, you know what? The only family hanging. <laughs> and you know something? Um, I think now Ben Affleck, uh, he's got to re- he's got to respond back to you because I, I don't think he's ever tweeted back at you. Well, I've he never tweeted at him. So. <laughs> oh well, you need to tweet at Ben and show him, and you need to show him what The Rock did. Ben's got to step up. Ah, uh, yeah, screw Ben, man. We moved. He's, well, but he's got Jennifer back in his life. Maybe, you know, maybe, you know, maybe now he's a different guy and you guys can be buddies again. I thought they already broke up. <laughs> they they, just got no, married. they did not already break up, did they? I, I thought know. they just Jennifer got married. Jennifer Lopez, not Jennifer Gardner. Uh, yeah, Jennifer Lopez. That's what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. Been, there's been a few yeah. relationships that have happened since then, Danny. Get with it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But I forgot there were, there, he did have a couple of Jennifers in his life. Yeah, so that, that does make it a little, yeah. I thought for sure I saw something where they just got like married. Oh, yeah. That's what I saw yeah. too. They had yeah. like their third wedding. They're getting married over here. They're getting married over there. Yeah, they're having a lot of weddings. Why do I know this? <laughs> I, you know, dude, I feel like it's still too, like if I, I don't know how they do it, by the way, since we're talking about it, because I don't know how long ago it was that J, that A Rod just like bought her a, a fancy car. I feel like it was just a year ago. Maybe it was longer. And I just feel like then all of a sudden I'm marrying the woman that I know that A-Rod was, you know, hitting home runs with. I feel like it's too soon. Well, you know, I, I mean, mean in, in their tax yeah, bracket. They, they, I mean, they, they also have, like, history together. So maybe they're just like, you know what, after all these other relationships, I realized that you and I were best, we were meant for each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for I know. At least I, the I, next year or so. I want to <laughs> think that way. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it, like, with all that money, like, buying someone a fancy car is the equivalent of us buying our significant other maybe flowers and chocolates. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the money so much, Vicky. It's just that was my memory stamp. I, in other yeah. words, yeah, he bought her a fancy car, but he was also taking her to slam town at the same time that's what i couldn't get over like wait weren't you just slamming a rod like a couple months ago and now we're getting married he he got her the porsche back in 2019 so it's been a bit okay it has been a bit all right that's that's three years that's enough there's several of years of removal from slam town 
<laughs> Dude, I love as I was on like some like some celebrity gossip like news site or a news site. I use that term very loosely, of course. And it says the same day her ex husband was getting hitched. Like this was added to the story about. Jennifer Lopez. And, and, and so they go, the same day that her ex-husband was getting hitched, Jennifer Garner was spotted at a Sam's Club in West Virginia. She was with her dad and her boyfriend. I'm like, why is that even Why does that matter? <laughs> right? Like, uh, thanks for the update. She I was wasn't wondering. invited to the wedding, Steve. I was Steve. worried oh. how Jennifer was going to be doing yeah. with her ex getting married again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And listen, I just think and Jennifer I saw Anderson, Jennifer Garner more as a Costco kind of girl, but I guess I was wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah fair, no, you're actually, right. Yeah. That's that's why I'm not a Jennifer uh, you know, Garner person. <laughs> and how's Jennifer Anderson, Aniston doing? Because I feel like she should be just mentioned in any conversation that has a Jennifer. That would be great if they just yeah. added that on to end, the end of every celebrity news center. Britney is crazy. Also, yeah. Jennifer Aniston is doing great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Her Jennifer, turkeys are still done. Yeah. And Jennifer Aniston, yeah, she is uh, <laughs> sizzling in string bikini. What? I didn't see this. She's you age asked. appropriate for me. So I need. I can look at these pictures and not be considered a creepy old man. Oh, I don't know about that. But. Yeah. She's like she's like she. I don't. I mean, she's like maybe ten years younger than me tops. You think? I yeah, she's in her fifties. What are you at? Right Fifty three. Yeah, so I'm, and I'm, and I'm not even, I'm not 62 yet. So oh. she's totally within, like, I'm not a perv land for thinking she's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> See, I know. I need more Jennifer Aniston to be, like, running around so I can have someone to go, she's cute. And not everybody go, yeah, thanks, Petey Pedo. You know, I don't need that. Petey Pedo. Anyway. Can you yeah, please you change your Instagram name to I'm that? I'm going to change it right now. Yeah, there you go. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, dude. Yeah. All right. Um, we got a uh, we got a man that had to wrestle an alligator right before his kid's first day of school. What? How is that even a headline? Okay, well uh, you're gonna hear him share his crazy story at seven seventeen on the Rock. BJ and Migs mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. What if you could make fresh, delicious meals at home without the stress of planning, prepping, or cleaning up? Introducing Tavala. Tavala is a first-of-its-kind meal service that makes eating well effortless. By combining a countertop smart oven with delivered meals, just scan a QR code to cook dinner. First, choose from a variety of chef-crafted meals delivered weekly to your door. When you're ready to eat, just do one minute of easy prep. Next, scan your meal's QR code with the Tavala Smart Oven. While the oven automatically switches between modes and temperatures for the perfect cook, just sit back and relax. Your food's ready in 25 minutes or less. No shopping, no chopping, no cleanup. Simplify mealtime today with Tavala. Go to Tavala.com now to save $150 on a Tavala Smart Oven when you agree to order meals six times. That's T-O-V-A-L-A dot com. Promo applied automatically at checkout. Tavala. Eat well effortlessly. Tavala dot com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I say this dude from Missouri is taking his kid to school for the first day. I can't even imagine this, man, really. You know. Oh, man. And you're walking the kid to school and there's a freaking alligator right in front of their house. <laughs> It's like what? what that doesn't happen in Mercer Island when you leave your house no, every no, morning. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't I mean it's like no. Hello, alligator. Yeah. It's like, what? So this guy, Mike, he's like, all right. And and what he says is go, look, I watched a lot of Steve Irwin as a kid. So he's like, I am s so, I got a lot of knowledge from watching Steve. See, that would be the problem for me. I'm like, I watched Steve Irwin. I can tell only handle this crocodile realizing, well, Steve Irwin had a certain skill skill set that I'm not I'm not having. Well, this guy figured it out. I get, he I get, he really must have absorbed it, Steve, because I'm with you. I probably would have lost an arm. Uh, and and at he's best. Like, yeah, yeah, at best. You're right, at best. Uh, and here he is talking about how he actually wrestled the alligator and got it back in its pond. Well, good morning, Groggy. I'm ready to just take my kids to school. It's my daughter, first day in middle school. So she runs back. Dad, there's an alligator in front of the door. I'm thinking she's joking. She's trying to skip school, not go to school. Walked in front, like, yeah, there's a gator. Steve yeah. Irwin, crikey, there's a gator. That's what you do. You tip it back. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. I crossed that off my bucket list. I'm going to wrestle alligator today. Mm. 
Oh, crack it. All right, uh, the guy looks a little, he looks pretty, he looks pretty buff. He looks like he's in great shape, though. Yeah. I don't think I'm, I'm, yeah, if it's me, it's like, yeah, I'm not even trying. Yeah, I'm sure, like, your dad's like, dad, there's a crocodile out front. I'm like, all right, let's lead through the back door. <laughs> it's eventually going to walk away. I'll see at that point, I'm like, now nah, we're calling in. You can do, you can miss the first yeah, you're, 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 you're <laughs> We're locking the doors and we're not going out until we make sure that that crocodile is gone. Somebody yeah. make the popcorn. We're, we're not leaving our yeah. house ever. Again. I'm not going right. to work. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Dude, I'm not, yeah. if that's your dad, though, and you see your dad do that, are you not thinking, my dad is a freaking beast? <laughs> Best first yeah. day of school uh, story ever. Right. What did you do over the summer? Well, my dad beat up an alligator this morning. But, you know, besides that, it was kind of lame. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, mean, I don't know if I believe you. I know. But imagine the leverage the dad's going to have when his daughter is now in high school. It's like, hey, you know, any boy that comes over, <laughs> guess what? I wrestled an alligator. I don't think, think I can't do that to you. I conveniently have, like, news stories printed out for whenever that day does happen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just kind of like, oh, could you pick that? Oh, oh yeah, that was from a few years ago where I beat up an alligator. Yeah, no. Yeah. No. Wait, are you taking my daughter tonight? <laughs> Just one. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's the lukewarm topic of the day. All right, so, yeah, this dad, uh, you can see the video on the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com of this dad wrestling an, an alligator right before his kid's first day of school. So based on this... We want to know, what is the most epic thing that you have ever seen your parent do? And I'm pretty sure my children will have plenty of stories. It's going to be hard for them to pick from all of the... Yeah, I'm sure some happened this weekend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. What's the most epic thing that you have ever seen your parent do? We got your calls. We got your texts. After Metallica on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. Yeah, ninety nine point nine KISW, the Rock of Seattle. All right, so we get this uh, dad wrestling an alligator right before his kid's first day of school. So, based on this, we want to know what is the most epic thing that you have ever seen your parent do? 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. Yeah, some good texts already coming in, BJ. One of them said, I saw my dad make it rain at a gentleman's club. Neither of us knew that we were at Deja Vu at the same time until that moment. Huh? I was wasted and I yelled, Dad, F yeah. Oh, to which wow. one of the strippers thought that was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good moment right there. But what are the odds that, A, you are going to see your dad at a gentleman's club at the same time, but then also see your dad make it rain? Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, yeah, yeah, you won't be seeing, that usually I would say, because I've, I've always thought, I don't want to go to a strip club with my kid. Well, they yeah. didn't want to. They just ended up at the same one. Yeah, that would be, I think I might end the evening. I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, well, you just I made just, it rain. I think the yeah. sun's got to go. Yeah. If um, one has to go, the son has to go. But I see yeah. neither of them going at that point. Just be like, hey, Dad, can I borrow 100 bucks? You obviously have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just go over there and start picking up the money and be like, that's my allowance. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I should have had that. 206 421 Rock, Texas, and 77999. What's the most epic thing that you have ever seen your parent do? So, so when I was six, I watched my grandfather punch a moose repeatedly in the face. Some of the older people in my life were the most terrifying. <laughs> what? Damn! <laughs> the hell, the moose do deserve that, though. Right. Yeah. Well, that's uh, I again. That is they. They can be nasty. Those moose. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm going to go up there and be punching any moose. That's not happening. I've Another. heard they're really scary in real life. A moose? See, oh yeah, like yeah. huge, and they they can like yes. they can rip apart your campsite. Yes, they can. They can f you up. Yeah, they're not bullwinkle. I mean, <laughs> holy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're right, Steve. That is not. That was false advertising. Making yeah. it like Bullwinkle was really harmless because they're not. I mean, they made cartoons. They made a, a, a play area. They make it seem like the, a moose is like a fun loving party animal. Yeah. Yeah, and they're sh- and, and Vicky showed me the size of a moose compared to like uh, you know deer and horses, and they are bigger than that. No, and then they got those antler death things. No, <laughs> those antler death. Things. No, I'm not punching those- no moose. <laughs> It's not like they sharpen the antlers and all like weapons. Dude, they it's, sharpen them on human brains. Oh, That's what they, when yeah. they kill us all. They, I don't, you know, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I, I see your, your son's raising his hand because he's, oh, he's right. got a story about you, I'd imagine. Wow, I, can't, I, was, I, I was hoping he would say something about his mother and leave me out of this. I'm betting it's not about mom. Not at all. No, no it's definitely about BJ. That's great. Fantastic. 
Well, you know, I wasn't personally there for this, but after hearing the story so many times and seeing the actual pictures of BJ stripped for a charity event. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, yeah, that was. How old were you again when you did that? I was, I was, I think I was Joey's age. Maybe little, I, mean, I might have been like 31 ish, mm-hmm. somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. That Joe, was a long time with, ago. What are you doing with your life, man? You got to get on the strip club. Yo, it's true. I, uh, it really is. I don't know if anyone needs to see me floss with my own t shirts. <laughs> Well, I mean, in Chicago, I would have been down to see that. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true, actually. It was bad. It was, you know, I, I, you know, it was a stupid wheeze. You know, wheeze is like, I'll do anything bad, you know, and then I got I, I to gotta go along with it because I'm the guy, you know, I, I was the, the sidekick on the radio show. So wheeze is like, well, we're going to raise money for charity. We're going to do. Here's, yeah. I think oh, you found God, the picture. So yeah. That's right. You it, did get like pretty much you went down to your underwear. Yeah, you, yeah. Are you, oh, don't, didn't, yeah. Are you, you're not going to post these, right, Vic? Oh, yeah, these are just for them. us. Well, that's how she found them. They were already posted on KSW's yeah, back page. back in 2015, so, I had them. Oh, uh, well, so good. Reshare. That's, uh, yeah, no, we'll there's no reshare. such thing as a reshare. Yeah. yeah. Save it for TBT of another year. <laughs> not today. Uh, guys, look at this. You know, I really, uh, I really had a dad bod. Uh, well, I guess I was a dad at the time, so was, that, that counts. What are you doing with your underwear in I that don't one know, picture? God. You're like kind of pulling it off of your bo- bottoms. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a professional. I don't know if you know that. That or not. She was trying to uh, to recreate the sunscreen girl with the dog. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what it looks like. And for those of you that haven't or seen like the pictures. out his swamp ass or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they were rip-away pants, Steve, and the underwear was what was left. So that, that was like a rip-away. Oh, it looks like yeah. you have something sparkly written on your butt. What does it say? I don't know. Dream it's Crusher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. I, I was dressed as a... Uh, I was dressed as Spock, so I was a Star Trek geeky guy. So they had me like they made me a Star Trek stripper outfit to, with tearaway clothes and a, the, the don't show Vulcan this to anybody. stripper. Yeah, I was a Vulcan stripper. Oh, wow. oh, it was bad, and I had really. Do you remember bad how much point. money you made from this? I don't, Steve. I think we hurt the charity that day. No, I really didn't. They do. give you money to put your clothes back on. That's Ooh. what happened. And then we really, Vicky, you're right. That's when we realized the secret sauce is they made it rain if I put it back on, and that's what that I do. Love that one person posted on Facebook when we originally posted this, and the guy wrote, "I have the weirdest stiffy." Right right now <laughs> yeah this is uh yeah you don't need to put the people don't need to see this this uh i'm so happy that this did not come out while we're at at, at our convention because that would have been that would have been oh, we would have had that on the big screens right behind everybody oh yeah that's you know what if they ever do like an in memoriam for me whatever someday if you got you you ought to that's that, that, your just, picture yeah yeah just put that out there what's that that boy's minute it's so hard to say bye to yesterday yeah that's it that's what you want yeah we'll have that right there yeah well i'm so glad that uh, uh my son joe that 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 is the epic thing that you remember about me well, you know, I'm just glad that I haven't followed in your footsteps yet. Yeah, yes. yet, yet, uh, yet. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we need to raise money. I mean, who knows? That Chase for thing. kids. Now we, yeah. we, I don't no. think we need to do that. That would be just that would, that would be torture for poor Mary's place if we had Joe stripping for money. Yeah. Two zero six four two one Rock Texas and seven seven nine nine nine. What? And I know it's going to be tough to top me as a stripper, but what is the most epic thing that you have ever seen your parent do? So and I tell you, oh, our buddy read this chicken man, Rocky, right. champ champ himself. He just said, my dad knew martial arts and my, I saw him, I saw him disarm a robber with a knife and break his nose. Whoa. Cops Whoa. told him, ni- cops told him, nice bust, son. Wow. That's epic. You know, you, Steve's just like the guy. If you're a kid and your parent can wrestle an alligator or disarm a dude attacking you with a knife, you do think your your parents a superhero or beat the piss out of Santa Claus. I mean, these are all things that <laughs> when parents do them. Oh, dudes, that is. I mean, really, that explains why you're the way you are. It really does. How so? How <laughs> Well, why don't you tell the story, and then we'll all make the call. Okay, well, I mean, I've shared it before, and it's probably one of my favorite moments. I, it, no, it's not one. It is my favorite moment that my dad has ever accomplished. Like, there will, there will never be a time that's more epic than that, when my Uncle Frank tried to come into our house to deliver gifts dressed as Santa Claus, like, right around Christmas time. It might have been Christmas Eve. I can't remember. It was so long ago. I was a child. And my dad didn't realize he was coming over. My mom didn't either. So all of a sudden, my dad hears from upstairs... The door being opened because we didn't unlock our our door wasn't locked and a man just going ho 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 and my dad just goes no 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 and flies down the <laughs> stairs. I'll never forget the visual because he does not look like he's touching a step, you know, like out of a cartoon. Oh, and it just seems like he just like just kind of jumped from the top step all the way down to the bottom. I know he did hit some steps, but he was flying. I never see my dad move that fast. Tackled my uncle Frank and just starts 
unloading like as if it's like an MMA fight, just hammer punches. And Santa's, I'm crying because my dad's beating the living crap out of Santa Claus. <laughs> my brother's freaking out as well. My mom's like, Bill, stop. Then Santa's yelling, Bill, stop. It's Frank. It's Frank. Stop doing it. And then my dad starts yelling at him because he's like, well, why the hell didn't you tell us you were coming over? So it's not even like it was like, I'm sorry I just beat you up, Uncle Frank. It's now you're the jerk because you didn't even warn yeah. us that you were coming over. And I hurt yeah. my fist on your face. Yes. Because you didn't warn us. You know, your dad is definitely a classic. I love a guy that can basically assault a human being and make them feel bad about yes. it. Yes. <laughs> it was never my dad's fault. Assault a human being dressed as Santa Claus about to give his children gifts at an appropriate time of year. Had this been the summer, I'm on your dad's side. <laughs> like, you know what? Your, your, your uncle should have called. But I mean, it is Christmas. Who the hell's coming into your house with the gifts? And your dad's just like, whoever it is, they must die. <laughs> this is a man dressed as Santa with the beard and yeah. his feet kicking in the air. Like, get oh, off of me. Yeah. He's like, I don't know what to do. Yep. How did he think that was a great idea to not call first or say, or mention it? Let's just say Uncle Frank was a little different. Okay. I mean, yeah. Still, though, I don't know. I mean, granted, I don't know He's the time. Like the, he was like the black sheep of the family. Okay. At but some I mean, point, nobody had talked to for Uncle Frank. Oh, I mean, yeah, but I mean, Danny, look, if it's Christmas time. You know, if someone's got access to my house. I figure it's got to be. I mean, how do you not? You probably would recognize him a little bit, like, right. you know, as an adult. Why right? wouldn't I'm, you? I'm coming to your house this year dressed as Santa. But oh, well, uh, yeah, well, I, uh, we will give you the Steve dad treatment. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying my dad didn't give it a moment to even, like, no, make, you know, like yeah. he was just flying down the stairs in tackle mode. There was no, let me, let me assess what Santa is and who it is and what, ask some questions. It was, there's a stranger in my house <laughs> where my children. <laughs> and my wife are there. I need to protect my home. Yeah. I don't care if you're Jolly St. Nick. I'm still going to hurt you. You know, that is, uh, that's just New York living right there. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I want to throw stones, but man, you know what, it, it, Steve, you grew up in one of the toughest places in the world, New York area, and you just like, dude, you know what, we're ready to protect the house. There's nothing good. There's nothing good can come of almost any situation if you don't know somebody. Hey, so one time I said, my dad took on five dudes that were armed. My dad beat Whoa. them all up, hogtied them, and brought them back on a motorcycle. Whoa. How, what, what? What? <laughs> Is your dad Chuck Norris? Yes. Really? That's some Steven Seagal ass right there. Yeah. Did he have a pool? He probably had a pool ball. And, and a sock. That, yeah. <laughs> had a, that's how, because that, yeah, that, we forget the power of the pool ball and the sock. Oh. Yeah. Seagal could work a pool ball like nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think on that particular bit of truth, we will, uh, hey, you know, while in Chicago, um, I, uh, I ended up somewhere. And doing something that shocked members of our show, and they sadly missed it. But uh, we are going to recap some of the ridiculous things that happened in Chicago at our convention. We'll do that at 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, if you're upside down in your mortgage, should you continue to make the payment? Continuing to pay your mortgage or not is a complex decision because you're going to have to pay to live somewhere. You're going to have a housing payment. So continuing to make your house payment really depends on several factors. One is whether or not you have a second mortgage. Um, the second one is how affordable your ongoing monthly mortgage payment is. Uh, another issue is whether your mortgage is adjustable and you're facing an increase in your mortgage payments later on when interest rates go up. If you do have a second mortgage in this economy with the housing prices being down, oftentimes we can re we can take off or strip off that second mortgage in a Chapter 13 case so that you'd only have the first mortgage to continue to pay. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagne. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. And 
Yeah, we're uh, we're struggling today because it's our hangover from our big convention that we had over the weekend in Chicago. And again, Chicago is such a great town. It, it never disappoints. Uh, it really, really never does. Great, great town. Great food. I mean, we didn't get to go to uh, uh, Bubba Gump's or the Rainforest Cafe like we usually oh, do. Oh, so but, sorry. You know, there were some okay places that we did get to go to. We did hit a chain, though. I didn't know it was a chain, but it turns out it is, uh, or at least there's a couple of them. Uh, the ha- the Happy Camper, turns out I didn't know there was more than one. I mean, if anything we could walk away from Chicago with is that the Happy Camper might might no it is the greatest bar that has ever been created i agree 100 percent. this was my first time ever going because you guys had gone before by yes accident, and you and you did not undersell it everyone is like you know you sometimes hear, like, we hype the living hell out of this place joe and i especially yeah and, yeah and it was just one of those like that could almost ruin it when you get there and it's yeah. not as no it was every bit amazing and probably 150,000 times more it's like everything about the vibe is great the people who work there are awesome visually it's just like there's so much to look at not yeah. just with like you know like the things that are on the walls, but also like the talent is on another level. Yeah, like we, I even I remember we was, I was BSing with the, our, our our waiter and he and we're like, dude, we just love this place. I'm like, and we joke about it, but it's true. It's like just when you think you saw the most attractive person from Chicago, in walks the most attractive person from Chicago, oh, and then thank you, five Steve. minutes later, that. BJ walks yeah. in, you're like ah, not everybody, oh, hey. and he's like, you, you know you. why? And I was like, no. I, He's like, there's an actual like he had a reason why so many attractive ladies are in this in this bar. He's like, oh really? I didn't hear this. The entire place is meant for selfies. Oh yeah. Which I was like, that is, I would have never thought that. But like, there's like a giant, cool, like quirky looking sign that says Chicago. There's this light up LED sign that says Happy that we took pictures in front of as well. Mm-hmm. All these disco balls. This like ma- makeshift camper is in there. He's like, everywhere you walk, all these crazy lights, it's meant for selfies. So girls love coming here oh. so that they can take pictures of themselves at there. That explains why the wall looks the way. Because I thought, they, I feel like they made that wall that I saw look just like a wall from Wrigley Field if outside the park. Right, right. Oh, that's, that, how brilliant. What a great, what a very smart idea. I remember looking at Dan, I'm like, we start our bar, we're making it selfie. And I'm like, we're never starting a bar, so I don't even know why we're strategizing uh, this. <laughs> you guys, you have great ideas, Steve. Don't stop now. But And, the, and everything about that place, the drinks are great. It's just an awesome mm-hmm. spot. Like, if you go to Chicago, go to Wrigleyville, where, like, obviously where the Cubs play. I know there's other happy campers. We haven't been to those, but the one there is just super fun. Yeah, yeah, it was a blast. I, I, you know, I was thinking of not going, and I thought, you know what? I mean, what, I'll just, oh. I'll just chill. And it, well, you're right. It's, it, it's got the out. It's, plus, we were like in the outside part, even though it was covered in case it would rain. But there's something about being at a bar that's got the outside feel that you know does make you feel like you're really just in a dark bar all the time. Technically, we were inside, but they had fake grass, so it right. did feel like we were outside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> EJ, and you felt right at home. Oh, I love the fake grass. <laughs> I, I like, came over to me and like, Steve, check it out. They got our grass. I'm like, yeah, nice. They did. <laughs> Yeah. My favorite, one of my many favorite parts of that time, though, was like, be just like, I want to go out with you guys and go drinking because I just don't want to like put all that sugar in my system. <laughs> so I'm just not going to go out and drink with you guys. And finally, you changed your mind, which I was glad you did. And you came out with us. And so what drink do you order? You order so, a drink that has a freaking donut on it. <laughs> Dude, Mr. I'm, gonna, I'm worried about my sugar. I'm going to blame. I'm going to blame the nope. server because I was going to get a different drink, which had the peanut butter screwball whiskey plus butter. It was called. It was called the butter cup or butter me up or whatever, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it had butter flavored rum and peanut. And so he looked at me and he goes, "Dude, this is like a martini." He, uh, he, uh, if you're really looking for coffee, I go, I, he goes, I got a drink for you. So they call it the morning hangover or whatever. And so I'm like, yeah, if it's got mostly coffee, yeah, let me do that. Oh, uh, the hangover iced coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, dude, he never said anything about a donut. So hmm. when he came over with the donut on top and I'm like, oh, my God, you guys looked at me and I go, I did not intentionally order a which it is an excellent drink. There's no doubt. About it. I mean, the donut was delicious. <laughs> of course, I had to eat it. I mean, come on. It was right there. Right. You could just set it aside and not have yeah. the donut. But it was it had vanilla uh, uh, vanilla flavored rum co- or maybe vodka, vodka. and it was yeah, vodka. vanilla flavored vodka the coffee and of course the donut on top which was uh, a sprinkled <laughs> donut. Don't forget glaze. the rum cream. Oh, I had the rum cream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know what? I forgot it. I forgot everything pretty much. That <laughs> yeah. Time. A few of those you're gonna forget everything. <laughs> yeah. It was a great place. Um, and we had these I, things called like these champagne bongs. Oh, my Shambong. God. Oh, Shambongs. Shambongs. They're, that's yeah. actually their uh, legitimate yeah. name. That's what the brand is. And it's like yeah. a, a champagne glass that also has an opening on the bottom of it because it kind of curves up. Yeah. And then yeah. you just kind of like, <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just suck it down like a beer bomb. Yeah, you do. 
Man, yeah. that was fun. Well, yeah. it's, I thought it was funny because you could just tell the state of our show as like we started, and because at first it was just Sarah, uh, Steve, and I that decided to do the shambongs, and it was fantastic. Sarah beat us both because she's way better at sucking it down on from the champagne glass. <laughs> okay, champagne. Uh, yeah, champagne. champagne glass. Thank yeah, you. yeah. This is not. Any, not, not don't read into it. But then, of course, we're watching the Cubs game that's happening just down the street, and there are tons of Cubs fans there, and so Steve and I concocted this plan to say. We're going to become momentary Cubs fans. If they win, we should all do champagne bombs. Yep. And we did. And they won. And it was the best, uh, it was the best shot I've But as the, it went into life. extra innings and Danny and, and it seemed like they just kept going back and forth yeah. scoring. So then at, at first we were just being Cubs fans, but then as we got <laughs> drunker, we started cheering for whichever team was winning. So yeah. when the Brewers would score, we're like, ah, the Brewers! And yeah. like everyone around us must have thought we were just like the most like idiotic Two people because we're cheering for whoever's scoring. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I thought that was like, I was kind of embarrassed because I'm like, yeah, I really know baseball and I, I got to move away from this table because <laughs> these guys are cheering for everything. We were just happy yeah. to see people score runs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it was uh, great. It was a great place. That was, you know, that was uh, really that was. I think it was the highlight of our trip, and really the only story that needs to be told. Our plan was oh, we yeah. were going to we were going to bar hop. We yeah. were going to start there in Wrigleyville and then go to because there's a bunch of great bars in that area. It's like a cool vibe there. We get there around two ish. We were there until like nine, I think. It was eight eight thirty nine. Eight thirty nine yeah. p.m. We put in damage there, <laughs> and then one of our friends, uh, Zach, who does radio elsewhere, he was just like going on and on about how he wanted to go to a gay bar because he he just wanted to go and hang out at a gay bar, well, the gay and- dude, and he was just like, no one wants to go with me. So of course we're like, we'll go. We don't care. He had gone the night before by himself, and he tells me this whole sad story about how no one wanted to go with him, and I was like, dude. Hit us up. We want to go. And he's like, we're going tonight. Right. I was like, all right, let's go. So what do we do? We head on over to Charlie's, a country and western themed gay bar. And it was, oh. Uh, <laughs> which, by so the way, great. how awesome is that? I mean, you talk about a juxtaposition of two worlds you never thought would happen. Charlie's made it happen. But my favorite part is we go to the hotel, right, to freshen up because we had been drinking at, at, at the happy camper all day. And yeah, I'm yeah. thinking, oh, it's probably just going to be me, Steve, Joe that show up. Like, everyone else is probably going to fall. And then who walks in the front door? BJ Shea. That's Ready right, to go. Brother. Yeah, it I, I was so happy. So I was like, you're happy. like, I'm down. Let's keep going. Let's keep partying. Yes. So we end up at Charlie's. Yeah, and I wasn't going to do it. But again, Steve, like, you know, like Danny said, you know, I hung out with Zach a little bit and, and, and talked with him, you know, that day at the Happy Camper. And he's a good oh, Zach dude. rules. Yeah. And, so and we like, met another guy named Zach that had an awesome mustache. He wasn't part of the radio convention. He was from some other town. But I thought that was pretty. He was. He's like, these guys are, <laughs> we're all like, you're awesome. You got a great mustache. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought, you know what, uh, you know, I'll, 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 what the hell, I'll go. I want the kid to feel like people, you know, people want to go hang with them. I mean, what the hell, why not? Oh, a bunch of us ended up going there, and it was great. And then, they, like, I, I was getting pumped because it felt like they were just playing songs from jock jams. Yeah. There, like, it was just, like, the most over-the-top, like, you know, jock jammy type dance music. And I'm, like, looking yeah. at Danny, I'm, like, dude, if they play Woomp, there it is. I'm going to dance on this table. Like, <laughs> so that's, that's my daughter's song. I'm, like, I've been trying to, like, will it into existence the entire time we were in Chicago. I'm, like, just, and I didn't request it, but I was, like, I, someone plays Woomp, there it is. I'm going to lose my mind. Of course, that didn't happen. I know, sadly. But it went from a dance club, then it became a, a drag show. Uh-huh. And that's where, like, uh, Joe and I were like, this is cool and all. But, like, after a while, like, you're just watching people lip sync. They weren't really singing. They were just lip syncing. Right. And I was like, I don't know. I don't care where I am. And I don't care who's lip syncing. I don't want to watch people <laughs> lip sync. So a few of us were like, let's go. Um, this isn't like, this, this wasn't the thing that I was really a fan of, like, just lip syncing. Uh, so we just ended up going back to the happy camper. But, BJ, you stuck. You, you didn't leave with us. No, I, you know what? I mean, uh, Zach wanted to stay and Sarah wanted to stay. And, uh, you know, this other cool person I like, Ricky, wanted to stay. And I'm like, well, I've already been to the happy camper. And I, I, I really felt like, man, I don't want to abandon this dude. So I thought, you know what? If, if some of us stay, it won't look so bad that if some of us left. It just I felt like, you know, hey, you guys want to go do something else rather than just everybody leave. So I thought, well, I'll just hang here. I felt like, you know, I already know the happy camper. And, uh, you know, and it was fun. I really, I, I'd never been to a drag show, so I thought, well, yeah, this is kind of cool. This is a new thing I could tick off my box. 
Yeah, some of those drag queens, too, were putting on quite the show. They really they were. were. Some of them were jumping in splits. Yeah. I'm like, woo, that hurts just looking at you. <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, I was like, okay, you really got to you gotta be committed to, like, you know, being physically ready and able to do this. Because otherwise you could pull something. I know, I'm almost a professional. <laughs> well, speaking of pull something, because somebody pulled you in onto the <laughs> dance floor from what I hear. Let's <laughs> just say, BJ was a popular man. I, I, this was, There yeah. was specifically this one guy that had the hots for BJ. Like, pulled him out on the dance floor, was twirling him around, like, for a while. And BJ was like, yeah, okay. And then once he realized, like, oh, is he serious? Like, and to me, I was like, he would totally take you home, Dad. BJ immediately (laughs) started, like, Flashing his wedding ring, like yeah, I'm married. So, well, dude, because you showed me video and it was the greatest. Because like he's just got BJ by the hand. Yep. Oh yeah. And they're just like, I mean, it, I guess you call it dance. It's more like just kind of like, like you're almost like the Mr. Wackies, and you're just like, <laughs> oh yeah, waving your arm. I think BJ was like, I don't want to give him the wrong idea, but I'm down to dance a little. But don't I think, think we're gonna saw, start grinding. Well, I think he's a BJ the started. sugar daddy. Yeah, that's what I. You, oh yeah. I, I, here's what I thought. Here. here Whenever you're at a wedding, somebody always goes and finds the poor old granny and pulls her on the floor because no one's dancing with her. <laughs> so I'm in the back and I'm like, he probably thinks I'm the poor old grandpa on the back because everybody's out there dancing. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm just going and have fun, guys. I'll just chill and hang. Or you know? he saw a group of us leave and thought, okay, well, now like there's, maybe he was a little intimidated because it was you with a bunch of other dudes. Oh, oh, like the, you know, like you know how like, you know, how you are when the whole crowd, the whole pack is there. Yeah, you don't want to hit on somebody yeah. when there's yeah. everyone's around. It's never happened in my life ever that anyone has ever come up and hit on me at any time, and so and we missed it by minutes. You oh. did, but I was flattered because the guy was a good looking dude. I mean, he looked like he had, he knew how to make himself like he. Was, I felt like, are you sure? Like, if he's interested in me, it's like, dude, this is a step down for you. Plus, I mean, he was younger than me as well. Like, well, I never those really jello shops were shots were cheap, so <laughs> yeah, so that's what it was. Yeah, you're, so you're, he did have glass. On you're saying they were probably beer goggles is what he had. Or on. jello shot goggles, one of the other. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's some guys out there and girls who like a daddy, mm-hmm. not well, a dad. They like I did daddies. Get that vibe. I think he did like the older gentleman. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wow, well, look at this. And right. I think maybe he was hoping you had a little bit of cash. Too. See, he doesn't understand. I'm not really a sugar daddy with my income. It's more like a Splenda daddy. I don't think he was like. <laughs> I had that going on. <laughs> yeah, Although, that was, yeah. I did love that. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but you were rocking a pineapple shirt. And oh, you, yeah. Is that, well, I, I know my wife picked that up for me. I told my, I told It's a nice shirt. Yeah, but like I, some view that as like a, the pineapple, the upside down pineapple. Oh, I didn't even yes. think of that. That's what that means? Is it like you're in thing? for swinging? Like not, yeah. If I yeah. wear it on, well, I, I, well, I mean, okay. I think some of the pineapples on your shirt were actually upside yes. down. Oh, that ain't right. <laughs> My wife, well, you think your mother knew that when she picked that out for me? Well, she probably didn't think you were going to Charlie's, the gay bar, while wearing it. <laughs> but she, well, you know what? She needs to bra- she needs to broaden her horizons of who the man she is married. I go where I go. I go where the action yeah. is. Well, this is the place you get hit on, a gay bar. Look, Dude, I never had my whole life. I remember, and I've told this story before, I had a co-host in San Francisco who was gay. And I always said, dude, you got to take me to the clubs. And I've never been. And I, I, I said, San Francisco, it's got to be epic. And he would not go with me. And he said, I don't want people to think that I'm that you're with me you will ruin my brand and I remember I was so insulted we had a big fight on the radio about that he's like there's no way I, I am taking you anywhere I don't want you just gonna make me there's no way you're just not no way so, so I says, thought, well, maybe well, he has a serial killer fetish, the guy. So, oh, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I had thought about that. It. So he, what you're saying is he's, he's just loving the Ridgeway is what he loves. And then yeah. I think Sarah shows up back at the Happy Camper to tell Thank us what's you. going on. I, I should have not. I, I should have gone back to the hotel. I think Steve uh, and Joe and I, my face were all the exact same jaws Jaw on the floor. Like, how did you get here? Now, mind you, we spent the entire time while you guys were doing that. We were at the Happy Camper and Joe and I were playing a contest to see who could throw an umbrella, like those umbrellas that you put in a drink. Into each oh, other's drink yeah. for like a good hour, just wasted. <laughs> oh, yeah, chalking them from across the bar. And the bartenders probably loved you guys. Ah, uh, they probably got annoyed because I kept reaching over the bar and taking more umbrellas because we, <laughs> oh. we were. We were we were throwing them you into are, the bar. They kept falling yeah. into the bar by accident. Yeah, you're that guy. No, no talking. No. Just this is our game. Yeah, I, I won. He did win. I don't, I'm the only one that got one so in. He finally got it in. Oh, man. But that Charlie's Place, the drinks were so cheap, which is like a stark contrast to the other club that we went to the night before. We were, we, we, we had a long day of conferences, but then it felt like everyone was like, nah, I don't want to go out. And I knew Sarah wanted to hit the clubs. Oh, I sure did. And I'm did. like, I'm not a club going guy, but you know what? Solidarity. I'm like, 
yo, we're going to the nightclub, whether or not we want to or not. And I am so glad that we, we all rallied and we went to the most ridiculous and random nightclub. But, dude, they were charging $20 a drink, BJ. Uh. Twenty dollars. It's hard to get wasted on twenty dollars a drink. That's a lot of money for a drink. That's like that's Hawaii money. Because I mean, that's what you pay if you go to a decent restaurant in Hawaii. I mean, you go, well, this is what I got to do. But Chicago, ordering a vodka tiny like that's twenty one dollars. I'm like, I didn't ask for a double. And they're like, it's (laughs) not. Damn, dude. (laughs) It was Grey Goose though. That was like their bottom shelf. That's probably how it was. So expensive. Oh wow! If that's your bottom shelf, you are whoa. Well, and the way that I found this club was (laughs) I just went onto Google. And I typed in clubs with the lowest ratings in Chicago because I figured that's where Sarah would want to go. The most ratchet, like disgusting club we could possibly think of. It's and true. that's the one that was the first one that came up. It yeah, had like, like two stars, two stars. And we're like, we're going there now. Other people in this radio convention that were following along with us. They're like, what, where are we going? Oh, let me yelp it. I'm like, don't. Don't yelp it. Just don't go. yelp it because you're not going to see us. good reviews. It was terrible reviews. And we went in there and it was empty at first. But they, they put you through like five different stops of security like i'm like yeah. where oh, are we are we meeting the president like what the hell is going on <laughs> like you're getting patted down you're getting this you're getting checked you're going there everyone's like looking at you weird you get down there and it was I, you forget we're in chicago so getting somewhere at 10 30 at night yeah is like going to a bar at like 5 p.m here yes it's empty yeah, it was really strange. There were more workers than there were of us, but and the workers were all beautiful. There was lots of ladies who were ready to bring bottles to your table. I honestly thought we walked into a strip club at we, first. And I was like, wait a second, are we in a strip club or not? And like, it turned out, no, those was just the employees. Yeah. And then we were thinking, oh, let's just get a table. The table to get a table at this place would have cost us fifteen hundred dollars. Whoa! <laughs> and, and one of the radio people are like, "Well, if we split it up amongst all of us, you know, be." I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm not. Even, no, I'm not contributing to this idea. Like, this is not. <laughs> yeah. I'm not spending over a hundred dollars a person, if not, you know, just to sit at a table. And then, the, like, to get a bottle was like for Four. Tito's was like four hundred sixty something dollars. Yep. Like not, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work either. So we just kind of wow. like walk around, and the the girls start kind of dancing. Sarah was the leader of the pack on that one, and our buddy Steph down in Vegas, she came with us too. They were just tearing it up, and then all of a sudden, we were just the life of the party, which made me so happy. Yeah, because there were other people. Then we ended up taking over a table and not paying for it, and we we were there for like three hours until we got kicked out of the table. But apparently the rapper Cameron and his, oh. or Cameron, I'm not sure how it's, Ca- I don't know. But they're like, yeah, you guys got to leave this area. Cameron's here. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was Sorry. like, what, like 15 or 20 of us or something just chilling, like without a table. And now we're like, oh, well, it's now, awkward. Yeah, now what do we do? One of my favorite parts about that, too, is watching the table across from us because they... I mean, we're just talking about how expensive the bottles they are. They spent a lot of money. They probably bought at least 20 bottles while we were Damn. just sitting there watching them. <laughs> watching them. Oh, yeah. that's. Uh, I spent a good like 10 minutes trying to figure out how I could steal one of those bottles. <laughs> but I was like, I don't know. Well, I was like, oh, should I go over there and like try to flirt with them so then I can be like chilling at their table? But then I'm like, but then I, we, I have like 15 other people with me. So then it's going to be like everyone's trying to like creep on their table. But it was a weird setup because it was like they, they must they dropped 1500 to get that table. Yeah. Then they got multiple bottles of booze like they kept getting different bottles of booze being brought over to them by these attractive employees and they're all like kind of doing like a dance that I was mimicking behind them yeah but <laughs> then those girls would just hang out with them and look unimpressed while drinking you know what I mean like they did not they look like they were being paid to hang out with these guys while drinking yeah. they were they not miserable oh, being yeah. there really? yeah and it was such a and I mean these guys were having the time of their lives so who am I to judge like they had the money to do it and they didn't care that these super hot girls looked like they were bored to be there <laughs> but I was like man I don't know man I don't know if I would want to drop that kind of coin not at all. just to have these girls look like they're being held against their will <laughs> to drink with us yeah, to pretend yeah. they like them. That's a big ticket to have people just have frowny faces all but the time. But once your shot's in, if you're beautiful, they don't care if you look excited or not. You're right there, you know? <laughs> they probably shouldn't mind. They're like, hey, we're popular. We have females at our table. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's a good point. Was, look, they're breathing. That's better than we usually do. <laughs> so here they are. <laughs> Dude, those Chicago clubs have full service. One of the girls we were with at one point in the night walks over to me and goes, do you want a bite of my cookie? <laughs> 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 I was like, what are you talking oh, about? Like, wow. We're in the wrong club for that lady. Yeah. yeah. So she, I look over and like, oh, she has a chocolate chip cookie. So I ah. take a bite and it's warm. Uh, where'd you get fresh baked cookies at the club? That's impressive. 
I don't know, but to I which I I had a very inappropriate thing I said to why it was warm. <laughs> of course you did. There Let's you like, go. Joe, did you not see where she grabbed that from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just say it was in her pants somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's a, oh, oh, thanks, Danny. We, we, You're welcome. Oh, and I had a woman come it out. Up. I was having a hard time figuring out what Steve might have said. No, no. I had a woman come up to me and goes, you look like an elf. And I'm like, no, I don't. And then I had to argue with this woman because she's like, she's like, no, I like elves. I'm like, I don't, I don't care if you're insulting me or complimenting me. I do not look like an elf. I've heard a lot of comparisons to a lot of things, and I'm okay with that. But elf, I'm not accepting. She's like, no, 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 you look like an elf. I'm like, how do I look like an elf? She's like, you have pointy ears, like the guys on Star Trek. I was like, no, I That's don't. Awesome. Like, how, what are you on, lady? Because I, because awesome. I do not look. And I'm like, plus I'm too tall to be elf. She's like, no, actually, you could be a tall elf. Have you ever seen the Lord of the Rings? And I'm like, I give up. Here we go. <laughs> By the way, whoever that girl was, I would have loved that girl because she's totally, she knows her geek stuff and you're just not having any of it. Well, I was like, of all things you say I look like, it's an elf? And did, but then doubled down on it. Like, right. She didn't yeah. let it up. Oh, yeah. She and knows she, she knows her geek stuff. She's like, dude, they do exist in my crazy world. So for a second, I'm like, oh, you know, who am I to think? I mean, yeah. if, if this person thinks I look like an elf, maybe I do. I, I don't, I'm not keeping up on elf culture. Maybe I, there's elves out there that do look like me. I have well, no idea. Don't forget, do you remember the tall elf and Rudolph? There was that one tall dude with the, the, I think he had glasses and everything, and, you know, there was, the, you know, all the elves were regular, but then there was the tall dude, and I, maybe that was, she was thinking of that guy. If you're an elf, you have pointy ears. And then well, she listen. says, yes, you have pointy ears, and I look at someone that we were with, that we were working with, they're like, do I have pointy ears? Have I gone my whole life not realizing I have pointy ears and no one's told me yeah, this? I'm sorry, I didn't want to no. bring it up. I felt like I was sensitive to you, so I just, you know, I just let it go all these years. You know? This went on for like 10, 15 minutes, BJ. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say this. The pointy ear part, I'm like, not sure where she's getting that. I mean, I really just like, I'm like, ah, you know, I mean, I would never have given you that one. I think she was manifesting what she wanted you to look like in her eyes. Oh, yes. well, hey, yeah. good for you. Oh, because she then said, I'd like to bite. Can I bite your ear? And I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then. Quickly. <laughs> then she gave me a warm cookie. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Joe and I, <laughs> we, we walked off into the sunset. <laughs> good for you. Wow. Chicago is fantastic. How was the cookie, uh, Joe? Oh, yeah. it was fantastic. Okay, it was great. Cool. Joe uh, was a he was a monster on the dance floor. He was. He was tearing it up. I've I never seen him dance or dance like that ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Joe, where'd you get these moves from? Okay. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Why didn't I oh I missed that? Mm. They were like borderline robot moves. Yeah. And, oh dang, I would love to have seen that. It was great because I, I mean Joe and I look like the two like least coordinated dancers out there on the dance floor. Both of us were just kind of like moving like robots. <laughs> but we were like strength and solidarity. With, and then especially with like Steph and Sarah who are like professional dancers and they're right. they're going all over the place and I'm like, what is actually happening? <laughs> I did a lot of hopping. They yeah, told me how low can you go so I started going real low and oh, hopping no. around. <laughs> Even the oh, side, no. even the side note, I was like, Joe, we're not at emo night. Stop jumping up and down. <laughs> and then this club, like, we learned rather quickly that, like, the girls can dance on top of the chairs, like, or on top of, like, oh, like they're uh, oh, the oh, oh, so they're allowed to. Right. They, they, or at least they're not told not to. But Danny tried to start dancing on top oh. of the booth. And I've never seen security flash a flashlight at a, a person quicker. Yeah. So like, fast. Like, wow. get the F down. Which is funny because I almost didn't even realize it was happening. I just, I thought somebody was, like, putting the spotlight on me. I was like, oh, God, here we go. And then I looked down and this <laughs> guy just, you did. This guy just pissed like, off at me. And I'm like, oh, this is a Nemo night. Gotcha. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, wow. dude, you don't. No, you're not in a short yeah. skirt. You don't have boobs. Yeah, what are you doing? Please, no. please get off yeah. of the booth. You thought your moves were so good, though, that the spotlight was yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. That's what we thought. Oh, Bring oh, short is... skirt next time to Chicago. I got it. Yeah, noted. Okay, this is my AGT moment. Here we go. I'm a star. <laughs> Plus, we had a good pot pie. That was pretty awesome. You guys ate those pot yeah, pie, pizza uh, pies. Well, I don't know what the name of that place was. Uh, Chicago but... Oven Grinder and Pizza Co. Oh yeah, it was good. They're known for having pizza pot pies. They, I think, they've been on Triple D, and then they just like went super viral. Oh, on, that was, on Facebook. I didn't know that. I love the fact that I went to a Triple D page because yeah. that's my man mission stuff. So the, yeah, it was great, dude. It, it was it, packed it, in there. It was packed, yeah. and Steve got the biggest sandwich I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, yeah. I got like this veggie grinder. And, they put the grind and grinder. Oh my gosh, dude, this thing was massive. I was so glad that they screwed up Joe's order because yeah. then they because these pot pies take thirty five minutes and they forgot to put his order in. And I was like, Joe, do you want, if you, if you don't want to wait, you can have half of my sandwiches. Not, I, I'm not even sure I could eat half of this thing. It was two sandwiches. It was it awesome. Really was. Yeah, it really was. Highly recommend going to that place. Yeah, that was delicious. I, I mean, I never had a pizza pot pie before, and I was like, this is, this is legit.
Yeah. So we, I mean, look, we had a lot. We have more fun stories. I'm sure we'll get them out there at some point. Uh, but Chicago again was fantastic. And uh, so, so, do you was, guys even go to the conventions, or do you just go there and drink all week? Well, I mean, we I drink say at this. the convention too. So. That's yeah. part of the convention yeah. is drinking yeah. Yeah, with yeah. the co with the other radio people. That's how you network. Yeah. I represented. I went to every panel but one. I did represent uh, because I I knew you guys would not be there. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Somebody from the show has to be there just to say that. No, no, we went that way. We could tell the company that at least we were on all the panels. And uh, we need a cardboard yeah. cuts, cutouts of ourselves to just yes, put up do. in the panel. So yeah. that way they think yeah, we're there. Do. But yeah. I, no, I, I didn't go to all the panels, but I went to all the uh, night activities. Which I, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Don't you always do. Yeah, you didn't skip any of the night activities. That should count for something. I was there to show support. Whether yes. we're going to Sarah's Booty Club Woo! or nice. we're going to or, or, or Zach's, Zach's Gay Bar, yes. I'm down. Let's yeah. let's party. Be. You, did, uh, you you were a man of the people. I was there to to keep your your son energized. I kept having to yell at him. Let's go, Joe. Wake up, <laughs> dude. He is kind of like a he's kind of like a you like that where he just starts to fade and needs to be rallied. I think I chopped him a few times in the chest. Like, come on, Joe. <laughs> it, it worked. <laughs> I was awesome. hyped after that. <laughs> that is fantastic. We got a uh, blind woman. I don't know if you heard about this. We got a blind woman who's going viral for sharing how she received junk pictures from men. And again, she's a blind woman. You're going to hear from her at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a blind woman, and she's uh, going viral on TikTok because she shared that a lot of guys... (laughs) This is pretty funny. A lot of guys are still sending her pictures of their junk. Again... She's blind. <laughs> it just shows guys don't care. Yeah. They're they just really, like, it doesn't matter if someone asked for it or not. They're yeah. just like, I just want to send it to this person. They're attractive. And it's like, well, and this person's blind. And they, yeah. I mean, she's beautiful. I just, but well, I would I mean, be like, yeah. oh, wow, look how beautiful she is. I should send her this unsolicited picture of myself. And, uh, yeah, so she, she can't see the photos, but she, uh, relies on something called a screen reader that describes them to her. Oh, in a, a, <laughs> and here she is talking about it. I'm blind and I get sent a lot of lower regional area pictures from guys. Maybe they don't believe I'm blind, but I rely on a screen reader to narrate my phone to me and it also narrates images. And I have just received an image and I have to share this with you. This is what my screen reader has described to me. One face, probably a mushroom growing in the ground. (laughs) 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 Uh, (laughs) Wow. 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 That's pretty funny. That's fantastic. I wonder how many times it took for her to start realizing, why are people sending me mushrooms? Or why are people sending me that, you know, until until she finally put two and two together and be like, Everything that the screen reader is describing is phallic. <laughs> oh, that's People funny. are sending me dong pics even though I can't see them. A oh, mushroom man. in the ground. A mushroom in the ground. <laughs> oh, jeez. A is, mushroom um, in a dark bush. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> what's going on there. Yeah, this is... Um, wow. That is... Uh, yeah, you're right, Steve. That's... Uh, that, 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 you know what? It doesn't matter. It's like, I'm leading with this. Well, so many unsolicited pictures of those kind coming through like maybe that's like an idea you should have like some kind of screening software that you hear it first and you're just like you know what delete this I don't need to see it wasn't well, it like like now like uh, you, someone sends you like some kind of a picture it might be inappropriate like things get blurred yes on Instagram at I least. think Twitter as well uh, you have to like click to see this like it's like if a direct message comes in with a picture it says it could be like sensitive content click to see the picture I haven't ah. seen it to the people like that I've authorized to like message me whether it's followers you've been authorized no seriously like <laughs> yeah, there yeah. is a, like a whole nother like little folder requests so they have to request it and then I, they won't know if I saw it or not and when I go to look at a picture that somebody sent that I don't know or haven't accepted the request to it will be blurred interesting you know what I did see some people posting I'd like do like like OnlyFans and things along those lines and they'll say hey you can for a price send me a picture of um, your uh, mushroom growing out of the ground and I'll rate it Oh, yeah, that's you. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, 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 wow. wow. <laughs> I was like, that's such a, I would feel like such a, y- you want to be good at, like, I don't know, like, if someone's sending me money, like, I still want to, like, be cool to them. Like, exactly. Like, it's, so. it's tough. It's like you're a paid endorser. 
That's a, that's why you know. Is it a real fair rating? <laughs> right, like you want good customer service. Yeah. Here's this person saying, "Here's twenty bucks to see my mushroom growing out of the ground." And are you going to say that's the worst mushroom I've ever seen, or that mushroom's tiny? Actually, funny enough, during in Chicago, I had this conversation with somebody. <laughs> of I, I may or may not have like did. I've had to, I've done ratings before, and I'm always very you know I find the beauty in everything, if you will. Right. Uh, but she said that she this one gal charges twenty bucks per image, and she would totally just crap on it just talk about how awful it is and then he would want to send another picture and that's another twenty dollars what is he like send the the, the mushroom grain on the ground to like to the gym or to like get plastic surgery like i mean a I different angle gotten, get some lights uh, in yeah. you know put a yeah. filter on it yeah you know, a little makeup a little yeah makeup because it's not much you can do to improve what you already got but there's oh, some geez. like angles that are just awful yeah oh yeah oh. what are you talking about oh yeah oh, of course yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean like, if you go from a low angle and you see like a dude with their face all grunting and the three chins, like because everyone from that angle has three chins. <laughs> it's like when your phone accidentally goes in the selfie mode when you're like you're like looking there and you're like, what the hell is that? No, oh, it's my face. Yeah. Wow. So are they going to make specific like ways to you know like whether to, to really make your package look better? So they, like they, the whole line of products. I'm sure there's a web. Uh, I'm sure there's an article on BuzzFeed like five tips yeah. to make your un- <laughs> your unit look greater on pictures or something like that. I bet you any there's maybe it's not BuzzFeed but somewhere has some. Something like that. Well, I just know in general. I mean, I you know, I just figure. I always figured, you know, how people, when you ever take pictures of somebody, and if they're sitting, like if they're sitting, and so their knees or legs are in front of them, it makes their that part or whatever that part of their body look ridiculously huge. Yes. So, so I always thought, well, if ever I need to, if somebody if somebody ever asks for, I know exactly how I'm going to make this pose look. I'm going to lean far back as possible, <laughs> <laughs> so that things in the mirror look larger than they appear. I mean, I have always kept that tip in my head. Because I, I thought, oh, that's a strategy right there. But that's I all think, I got. That's all, that's all I got. I don't have any makeup tips for it. I would find such great joy to be able to have someone said, hey, that's a sweet new car. Like, you got look at that Tesla you just bought. How did you? How could you afford that? Well, I rate dongs on the internet, and I made enough money so I can buy myself a Tesla. Wow. Dong like, yeah. rating. Right? Oh as, guys God. send me 20 bucks, yep. and then I tell them what I think about it, and then they sometimes send me more money. Is that dumber than the girl that farts in the jar? No. No, yeah. no. <laughs> it really level. isn't. No, it really isn't. I mean, this is why I sometimes, as a male, go, you know, we really can't say we're that smart. At some point, you really have to tum up the, you sum up the total of all the things that all of us guys do and go, yeah, we're not going to win the brain contest here. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> See, if I was going to do that, if I was like the person sending the pick and the money, I think I would like, you know, dress it up like, you know, like, oh, like you a would? Mr. Potato Head type of a oh, thing. Oh, like, guys oh, in the top hat guys. Oh, 10 God. out of 10. Might as well. Look, yeah. you've got all those outfits you dressed your dog in. What the hell? Recycle them. <laughs> little scarf. <laughs> That's a great idea for you to do. Vicky has a side hustle. You can make little uh, dong clothes. <laughs> dong wear. Dong wear on Etsy. Headbands. Dong wear. Little headbands. That's right. Oh, headbands for, yeah, I get it. I think somebody headbands. On, I, think I job, saw on Etsy that somebody actually makes it, oh, makes gosh. stuff. Again, if you go on the web internet, you will find the oh, answers yeah. to any question that you want. Of course have. you do. You will, anything you want, Etsy, Etsy probably has. That's unbelievable, though. How about that woman? She, she can't see. Yeah, 20 bucks. Yeah, people are like, hey, I'm going to send pictures of myself because I can't, maybe, you, do you think that they send them because they're like, well, she's not even going to know what it is. Ha ha, that's my stupid little, like, game. Um, yeah, I mean, at that woman. point, I'm going to go out and take pictures of mushrooms in the ground and just, you know, that way. You know what, then the problem is, is that people just do not pay attention. So if they see a hot girl, they don't even think that she's blind. So it's just like, ah, here you go. And it's oh, yeah, that's lame. I know, it's super lame. But if you, if you don't know, I mean, if you do know, then all right, well, all right, maybe you think this is your way in or I don't know, or maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe you hope that the voice to speech makes you a lot more impressive than you are. <laughs> You know, and like some people are mushroom in the ground. This one might go, that's the Empire State Building. You know, who knows what the, the, they'll say, you know. But if you, yeah, if you're just randomly sending pictures, it, she's proof that guys don't even read the bio. They're just going, hot chick, here's my penis. <laughs> she's living what's proof the success that that's rate on that? Like if you were able to pull every single person that's ever gotten a picture of that variety, which I know is impossible because not everyone wants to like partake in surveys. But if you could like get a survey done of everybody that's ever done, how many people, without seeing anything else other than what was sent, were so interested in that person that they actually went up, end up hanging out or hooking up with that person? Yeah. I feel like you got to be under one percent. <laughs> yes, if even it, even if it's not just zero point zeros. Here's the thing: if it's even if it's zero point zero 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 one, you got that dude. 
there's still a chance. Yeah. You know, you've got that dude that's like, this will work out. Mine will be the difference maker. Because <laughs> I know like, some people are like, oh, yeah, you know, go to a bar and I'll just be like, you want to hook up? You want to hook up? And you know, 100 people say no, but maybe that 101st person says yes and it's a success. And well, it's like, okay. That seems a little bit different, though. And I think that the the, the, the odds are different for people who, like, obvi- it's a mutual where you're sending just dirty pics to each other, but it's a mutual understanding of, of doing it. And, but but I think that guys are just dumb. Yes. They automatically are like, this has worked with a girl before, even though it was consensual. So I'm just going to do this now because every girl wants that. And it's like, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah, go and cut to the chase and work with this one chick. It's going to work with no, no, no foreplay. No, right. no fun conversations here. Right. This is what I'm packing. It's just all about time management. I wasn't really trying to be rude. <laughs> are you um, great at trivia? Well, if you think you are and you think you can beat Migs, you know what you got to do. You got to call in right now. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, My house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. Automation is powering what's possible for businesses of every size in every industry. Unlock your potential at Automate, the largest showcase of robotics and automation in North America, May 22nd through the 25th in Detroit, Michigan. With over 600 exhibitors, 200 speakers, and more than 25,000 registrants, there's no better way to power your business. Register for free at AutomateShow.com. That's AutomateShow.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle, partnering up with Mary's Place because Kids for Kids is back. Kids going back to school, they need those shoes, man. Got to get them on their feet. And they have about 200 kids that are part of Mary's Place and their shelter. And obviously, they, 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 they've been dealt some tough hands in life. So this is a great way to put a smile on their face. 50 bucks will buy a brand new pair of sneakers for a child. $100 for a teenager. BJ, we have a goal of hitting $20,000. And thanks to the Rockaholics, we're almost halfway there. So I know Kicks for Kids Day is going to be this Friday. And, of course, we're going to go hard and trying to get as much money raised throughout the entire week. But if we could crush that $20,000 goal, that would be massive. And thanks in part to a lot of great Rockaholics, including people like uh, Kelsey Prokop donated $69 joining the 69 Club. Carolyn Van Korbach, nice. $150. And, and she left a comment saying, I love Mary's Place and all that they do. I volunteered before. Seeing firsthand all that they do is amazing. Wonderful group of peer, people who really do care. And I know we've been there and seen it firsthand as well. They're a great organization. So it's awesome to see all the rock hauls donating. And so far, like I mentioned, we have $8,300 raised. The goal is $20,000. We can do this. Yes. We can do this, and you can help. And even if you don't have a a cast that you can spare, you can share this on your socials. All the info, you know where to go. Donate KISW.com. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. Victoria. Who is 
ready to play Beat Migs. I feel like I'm a little more ready now than I was earlier. Oh, that's good. You seem more awake. I do. The coffee's (laughs) kicked in. I ate some food. Ooh. feel like uh, 80% of a human being. I mean, that's more than earlier, which was what, maybe 20? (laughs) Yeah, it was bad. (laughs) (laughs) But you still won earlier today. So let's see if Chris has a better shot. Today we have Chris from California. Chris, are you there? BJ Shane. Who cares? All right, Steve, now get the hell out of here. Let's go. Uh, For those who are playing at home, Chris has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you'll only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's do it. Arnold Schwarzenegger was born in what country? Austria. Correct. On Sesame Street, which two characters live in an apartment at 123 Sesame Street? Yep. Singer James Brown passed away in 2006 on what holiday? Christmas. Correct. If you want to raise Thor's hammer, what must you be? Worthy. Correct. What vegetable is found in dishes served Florentine style? Uh, pass. Uh, what type of tea flavored with oil? What type of tea is flavored with the oil from the Bergamot orange? Pass. Uh, what is the frothy foam on top of a freshly poured beer called? Uh, the head. Correct. When the Corvette was first introduced in 1953, it was only available in what color? Uh, Blue. Nope. Green. Nope. Black. Nope. What holiday do we celebrate on the first Monday of September? Pass. What is Mickey Mouse's dog's name? Pluto. Correct. One, two, three, four, five, six. Woo, you did really well. You kept passing, so he was able to at least get to all the questions. That's true. So yeah. we shall see. He's going to hate himself, though, for that uh, that that holiday he missed. Right. <laughs> he's going to hate himself when he's he's going to be like, oh, uh-oh. Well, we'll see if... Me or uh, him. Oh, oh well, I, 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 hope, uh, I hope you miss it, too. That way there'll be a mutual <laughs> hate party, and I'll be winning. <laughs> oh, fine. All right, Steve, are you ready? Oh, uh, yes! Arnold Schwarzenegger was born in what country? Uh, Austria. Correct. On Sesame Street, which two characters live in an apartment at 123 Sesame Street? It's got to be Bert and Ernie. Correct. Robert Ducky. <laughs> Singer James Brown passed away in 2006 on what holiday? Christmas. Correct. Oh. <laughs> if you want to raise Thor's hammer, what must you be? A girl. No. Oh. Well, I mean, that is true, at least in the last movie. Um, You have to be a god. No. You have to be strong. No. Oh. What vegetable is found in dishes served Florentine style? What vegetables? Eggplant. Nope. Uh, broccoli. Nope. Um, cal- cauliflower. No. Cauliflower. Oh. What type of tea is flavored with the oil from the bergamot orange? Hibiscus. No. Orange tea. No. <laughs> General Tso's tea. <laughs> no. General Tso's tea, yes. No. What is the frothy foam on top of a freshly poured beer called? Head. Correct. <laughs> when the Corvette wow. was first introduced in 1953, <laughs> it was only available in what color? Red. No. White. Oh. Yeah, it was white, but that was too late. too late. Oh, I'm so sorry for you, sir. That is one, two, three, four, which means you lose, Steve. Oh. Six to four. Got to get tired again, man. Nice yeah. work, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Steve. Yes. Suck it. Oh, wow. Wow. Very well, aggressive for almost Good sportsmanship is not dead. No, it's I not. love it. Congratulations <laughs> to everybody involved. In Have that. a great Monday. Yeah. I hope course, you had every uh, traffic light. Oh, wow. Oh, that right, is well, harsh. What? Yeah. Well, no? It's almost as bad as saying, I hope you step on a Lego. <laughs> yeah. That's meaner. That mean. uh, yeah. Steve, don't worry. We got something special for you. The question that he did get that you did not, if you want to raise Thor's hammer, you mu- what must you be? The answer is worthy. Worthy, my friend. You must be worthy to raise Thor's hammer. <laughs> who, just, uh, who determines that? The hammer. <laughs> the hammer. No, the hammer that. determines it. It's a very it, judgmental hammer. Yeah. It is. Not just uh, anyone can raise it. And even for a while, <laughs> Thor has not been worthy. Yeah. Did you not watch yeah. the first movie? You know, I Come did. On. I don't remember any of it. That's right. It's all up to Mew Mew. Mew Mew makes the call.
Mew Mew? That's the nickname. That cat? That's the yeah. nickname of the uh, hammer, yeah, Mjolnir. Right. Oh, of course. <laughs> Everyone calls it Mew Mew because no one can pronounce Mjolnir. Exactly. So what was the question that the person was going to be mad at themselves about? Oh, you didn't get to that one. What holiday do we celebrate <laughs> on the first Monday of September? Labor Day. Yep. Yeah, Damn he it. Did not, he did not know it. And I'm like, dude, it's like right away. We, all we're talking about is pain in the grass all Labor Day weekend. Well, I mean, that's, that's you know, that's very, uh, I don't know. We, we can't just assume people are listening to us. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's <laughs> I mean, a question. We are, you know, I feel like we're a radio station. If somebody calls in, I feel like at some point they probably should be. I mean, they got. Yeah, you know how some things are. Certain uh, things yeah. go in one ear and out the other. Yeah, boy. He's in California. He's probably not going to make yeah. the trip up for pain. Yeah, he doesn't want to come. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. All right. That's, that's information he doesn't good. need to retain. All right. The yeah. two that right, you, neither of you got to or di- didn't get. What vegetable is found in dishes that are Florentine style? Uh, Danny, do you know it? I don't. Oh, it's spinach. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and BJ, Delicious, man. BJ might know this one because he's a Star Trek fan. What type of tea is flavored with oil from the bergamot orange? Well, you know, it's funny, Vicky. I was trying to figure out all this stuff. and I thought, you know what? My third guess would be tea. Hot. Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Earl yeah. Grey. Yeah, Captain uh, Captain Picard's favorite tea. How sad is that? Once you said BJ, I know it. I was like, oh, it's Earl Grey. Yeah, <laughs> you knew it too, Steve. How bad is that? Wait for me to say Star Trek, huh? No, no, because yeah. you've, you've you've quoted that so many times. Yeah. Like, that's the only tea that he ever mentions. <laughs> yep. Uh, and let's see if you would have gotten the last one. What is Mickey Mouse's dog's name? Mickey. Oh, that's uh, Pluto. Yep. Oh, so if you would have gone Steve. to him, you would have oh. had a shirt. Victory so close. Yep, and you did get <laughs> white as the first Corvette ever. This one says they weren't doing well getting paint to stick to fiberglass. That was one reason why Corvettes were only available in white that oh, year. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, well, there you go. You got to get some primer on that bitch. Anyways. I was thinking white too, man. <laughs> I would have I would have gone red, blue because I go primary colors. And then I mm-hmm. thought, I'm no way it's yellow. And then you get, well, do I go between black and white? And I was like, you know, I'm going to go white. I always get thrown off when I see a Corvette that's not red. I just, oh, you're yeah. just so yeah. conditioned to always see a red Corvette. Well, thanks to Prince. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you all for playing Beat Mix. You're very welcome. I, I didn't play, but I still appreciate you, the courtesy. You participated. Yeah. Speaking of the speaking of white, which again, this is the first thing I thought of was Walter White because uh, it, we la- the, last Monday a week ago today was the finale of the entire series Better Call Saul, which I finally caught up with on the plane back home from Chicago. Okay. And it was, boy, it was, uh, boy, what an epic ride. I just, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Aaron Paul and um, uh, Heisenberg, I always Brian forget. Brian Thank you. They both made appearances in, in the last uh, couple of episodes. Right. And, uh like the show does, there's flashbacks, flash forwards, flash this, flash that. The one thing they did good this year, or all really all during Better Call Saul, is all the black and white stuff you knew was present. Like you knew this was what's going on now, and then everything else was like just basically flashback. But how far back were they going to flash? You know that kind of a thing, and uh, they filled in a lot of blanks. It's kind of funny. They gave us scenes from when he interacted with everybody from. Uh, Breaking Bad that we made we didn't see, but you got to see times where he's spent with Heisenberg, times where he's with Jesse, times where he's with everybody, um, as it fills in the rest of uh, Saul's story, which was uh, you know in a way, it's a it's a fascinating ending, not super surprising, but God, great okay. great performances. Man. Hey, this might be a dumb question. I don't know if you yeah. want to spoil it or not, but like, do we get to find out exactly why he's working at a Cinnabon? Yes. In the last episode, they, like he does, he like make someone a Cinnabon or something. Right? I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. After everything happened, Steve, the entire life that Saul Goodman had, he serves he's Jesse. Like, and here you go. Here's a Cinnabon. Here you go, uh, Jesse. Uh, That'd be great if all of a sudden that's uh, the, the big appearance of present day Jesse shed a Cinnabon. Here's the cool thing that I loved about this, though, and it was a big surprise this season. And again, spoiler alert, but you if you've been watching it, what I'm about to say isn't going to spoil anything because this is about episodes that have happened three, four weeks ago. So hopefully you have seen those. But, you know, dude, I was so stoked to see there, there's a little old lady that basically, you know, he's got a con and... Uh, so she has a prominent role into what happens at the end of the season. And the little old lady is Carol Burnett, who, oh, wow. I mean, a great, great comedic star who was huge back when I was growing up with her own variety show. I didn't, I didn't know she was still with yeah, us. Yeah, dude, I, I have to say I wasn't kind That's of, cool. I didn't know. But I'm like, why does she look so familiar? 
And, I mean, man, we're seeing some, like, classic performers because, uh, you know, I'm watching Only Murders in the Building and uh, Shirley MacLaine shows up. But I am i didn't know that's who that was. And she's very, very old as, as well. I hate, to, I hate to describe these people this way. But it's really cool to see them get work. Hell yeah. You know, I mean, you know that's kind of fun. I mean, Carol Burnett killed it. She was great. And it was a serious role. It wasn't like a comedy role. But it was like, wow. And I'm sure it was probably a big thrill for all the performers to get to work with her because, you know, she was the king when they were kids. So or which the one? queen. Yeah. Whatever. You know what? She was on top, baby. She was the czar. So which one's better, BJ, Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul? Well, boy. <laughs> I've, um, I've seen this chat. The only reason I'm asking, I've yeah. seen so many people from my home state, which is the home of Breaking Bad right. and Better Call Saul, and saying that, that Better Call Saul was way better than, than uh, Breaking Bad. And these are people that like die by that, that show. So I don't know what... what yeah. Uh, See, when she said that, like this is the dumbest question ever, but again, I've only watched one season of Better Call Saul, and I'm uh, basing it on that one season. Like There's no, there's no comparison. Fair. But, but I, 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 that's not fair of me. That's why I still say, though, you know, Breaking Bad's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, you know what? I, I just, you know, Danny, here's what I feel like. I feel like Breaking Bad was something that was an amazing show that many people thought we have not seen really this kind of television. And Vince Gilligan and, and all of his partners, I think, just got better and were in, and even became better at putting something on the screen. And the story of Saul, where they take this goofy character and people thought, how can you do a show? He was kind of like the comic relief of Breaking Bad in a way. And to really flush out his life with the great performances, to do it over the amount of seasons they did, I can see why people think it's a better show because it just shocks you at that they were able to create such, and you get to see the, like, the beginnings of Mike and Gus and, you know, and how they all got to be where they were in the, in the, in the Salamancas and all of that. And it was, it was really like, wow. Yeah. I, I, I think both shows are great, but I can see why some people are giving the edge to Saul. Uh, which and, and by the way, you can watch that on AMC or AMC Plus. I'm sure on demand. If, if you haven't seen the last season, I'm sure you can find Breaking Bad somewhere. I want to. I want to now start watching Breaking Bad. Like go back and go back and go into it one. again. Yeah, because it's like all right. Now that I know this, let me see like all of the you know wh- you know how it all came to be. Uh, it's tra- It's like a real tragedy in a way for so many characters on that show. Um, just so ma- uh, just so well done. I was oh. And then the the last scene of it is just. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to tell you this. Here's the crazy part. Danny, nobody watch it. It is a love story that's a tragedy. No. That's something that you I never expected from this. It is a tragic love story. Hmm. And that ends really tragically. And you're like, okay, you guys, you know what? I don't know. It's probably something. I bet it's probably something relating to Shakespeare, but I'm too stupid to know Shakespeare. You know, like something. Well, maybe instead of rewatching Breaking Bad, you need to start reading some Shakespeare, BJ. There you go. I think they might have to be, Steve. You know, I'm trying to get cultured over here, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, well done. Job well done. Uh, Better Call Saul, amazing. And it's done, and now I'm sad. I got nothing to watch. Mm. Yeah, you know, that's not true. Well, I mean, it's Bluey, so I haven't watched season oh, three yet. Enough, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. I know. I'm really, boy, I'm really missing the great TV. Yep. Yeah. Um, hey, it is time for listeners on the loose. You know what you got to do, don't you? Yeah, you got to pick the topic. You got to guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. What do you want to talk about? More TV? Sure, whatever. Or anything. We got your calls. We got your texts. We'll do that at 917 on the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. This is it, man. You get to go on the radio, but you get to follow Steve's rule. It's a simple rule, BJ, and that's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Some people wanted to talk about some of the stuff that happened at our radio convention, yeah. including this texter said, Hey, welcome back, guys. I want to talk about that weird, creepy look Steve gave in the background at the pick at the bar at the convention on your page. I laughed my butt off. I was the guy who said, Hannibal Lecter in the comments. What's the story there from Scotty and Kent? I'm not sure I know this look. What is that? Well, anytime I see you were taking a picture, I decided to jump in behind you. (laughs) Oh, look at you. And and give a very unnerving stare to the camera. So anytime I saw you getting in any picture with anybody, I was popping behind you and doing that look. 
Oh, you ruined that picture, and that was with somebody who I was really so excited to meet because uh, she did uh, she did radio in Boston when I lived there, and she's she's just fantastic. And you have to go give that look. That was uh, there's been so many uh, texts about like Steve, what was up with that creepy look? Steve, what's what are you doing with that creepy picture? Uh, that was very intentional. Any chance PJ is taking a nice picture? I want to be the creepy guy in the background. The funny thing is, I, you, you, I know you do that with BJ especially, but you were also just doing it with other people too, like like such as Joe. When all of a sudden Joe is just dancing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, just oh wow. Yeah, I thought oh. you were taking a picture. <laughs> wow, I didn't even remember that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, Joe, we weren't sober. Um, <laughs> no, I think I had bought plenty of drinks by then. Twenty dollar drinks. You're absolutely right. I think I, any chance I saw anyone was taking a picture, I would always try and get behind them and, and grab my glasses close to my face and take a sip and just give that look like. <laughs> You guys aren't making it home tonight. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've really got to edit that picture. I know. Oh, Photoshop yeah. it. You can make it work. You we can blur me out. out of there. Yeah. Actually, oh, a listener man. already did, which was funny to me. Would they Photoshop me out of the picture? And then someone crappily Photoshopped you back in. So, yeah, Photoshop <laughs> there. I love our listeners. They have a lot of free time in their hands to do so, silly yeah. stuff, and I think that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, see, perfect. Get him out of there. That's yeah, a that. really good Photoshop. Right, right not there. too bad. Yeah. Look at that, BJ. You can frame that picture. I'm going to frame that picture now that the, the, the creepiness is gone. And then someone photoshopped Steve back ah! <laughs> really badly. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Photoshop. Yeah, that's a really terrible Photoshop. But I think it's even better than the original, honestly. Oh. Well, sorry about that, BJ. <laughs> that's what happens when you take me around people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. And someone said, I guess, besides being creepy in pictures, said anyone on your show embarrassed themselves at the convention? I, I really feel like I did a pretty good job. I don't think I. I don't. I mean, unless you call some guy trying to hit on me at the, you know, no, at the gay bar, I don't think all. that's embarrassing. No. Otherwise, I I did nothing. You no, but I, I don't know if it was embarrassing, but it was one of the funniest moments. It was Danny was talking. We ran to one a radio guy from Minnesota, Dave Ryan, who's <laughs> a legend in in Minnesota doing radio, and we just got back from something. And he was asking how everyone's doing, and you mentioned that you went and got lunch yeah. with a few of the people on the show. And you went to one of those, what is it, the, the tapas restaurants. Yeah, it was an Italian tapas restaurant that was fantastic. But the problem is that with Danny sometimes, no different, I'm not here to judge because I slur my words too. <laughs> well, especially and, after lo- lots of drinks. Yeah, so when he's talking to Dave Ryan, I heard it just the same as Dave. It sounded like Danny said, I went to a topless bar instead of a topless oh, bar. Yeah. And so he goes, yeah, yeah, we, for lunch we went to a topless bar. And Dave goes, oh, really? Interesting. And Danny didn't pick up on that. So then Not Dave started talking about the type of food that he got at this topless bar. He's like, and we got some <laughs> pasta, and we got this really good thing with cheese, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just, I know that you went to a topless bar. Yeah. But I'm positive at this point that Dave thinks you went to a, 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 a strip club. Yeah. And yeah. And it's so funny to see just how uncomfortable and like trying to humor Danny. And finally I go... Dave, I don't think you understood Danny. <laughs> he didn't say he went to a booby bar. He went to a tapas bar. Oh. Yeah, and he, his face was like, oh, I was trying to figure out where they were going to serve pasta at a topless bar. Yeah. Right. Dude, I just remembered, I, you know, here I am thinking, pat myself on the back, what a great guy I am. I totally realized, no, I did embarrass myself badly. What? I totally forgot about that. That's right. Earlier you said that you almost got us yes. all in trouble. Yeah, I, you're absolutely right. I totally forgot about and this. And none of us know uh, what oh, happened. No, no, you're right. I totally, I, um, oh, oh boy, I can't wait to yeah. hear this. Oh, so, you know, here, I'm, <laughs> so the big boss says to me, hey, our company's throwing a little party for all the everybody's, and you guys all went with me. Yeah. I wasn't going to go because th- it was scheduled at a time where I was like, I was going to go support somebody else and say, hey, I got a panel, please be there. And I'm like, okay. Right. Some people are setting up like get togethers while the convention was still going on, including our company decides we're going to have a party yeah. while the convention's still going on. But of course, I'm like, well, I'm going to go where the party's at. Yeah. And, yeah, and, so and I, they signed my check, so I should probably I wasn't going to go to the company party. I was just like, this is tough. I mean, I got a, you know, my buddy really specifically asked me to be at his panel. And, but then, you know, uh, the hair club says, I hear you're not thinking of going to the party. I'm going, well, dude, the timing. He goes, you really should go to the party. Tell your buddy, you know what, this is a big thing. You know what? And he told me like the big boss, one of the big bosses were going to be there. Uh, so I go there. I go to the party. I meet the big boss. She's really great to me, but she's busy. You know, she's just doing a lot of other stuff with everybody else who's at this party. So I don't want to hog anybody's time. So I'm like, okay, well, that's the last time I'm going to see the big boss, but that's cool. It was, you know, it was a very cordial meeting. 
Then later on at night, like we always do, we all gather back at the hotel bar. And it's usually late. People are coming in from all the clubs or wherever or dinner oops, or whatever. Oops, oops. So I see one of my friends that I haven't seen yet at the at the bar. And you always interrupt everybody when they're talking. That's just how it is at this convention. It's never rude when you just walk in because you want to say hi to people and all that. And so I go, bro! And I am like just expletives coming out of my mouth. He's in a conversation. I am giving him the finger as I'm flying towards the bar. Well, of course, I I catch the attention of everybody. So the person he talks to turns around, and it's the friggin' big boss at the bar looking like a regular person. And I'm like, well, what's he supposed to look like? Uh, well, I don't a know. Or elf or something? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I just, you know what I mean? I just don't expect big bosses to be hanging at the bar with all of us. Us, You know, I look like us regular people, you know? And uh, so. Now it's the cool thing about it, because I just met her there too. Now it's like one of the things she brought up was just like, like, it's just fun to meet the people that, you know, usually get to meet in a relaxed situation. I don't think. I, I get the vibe that she probably didn't give it. Uh, I, I know she that. was very kind. She's I, but because what I said is I because I had a I had a couple of beverages too. So I'm like ah, nah, with the fingers up, and then I see her face. And Steve, I went white as a ghost. I'm like, oh my god, this is probably the one thing Hair Club did not want me to do. Yeah, was to just and I'm like, oh why why did I have to be such a moron when I mean here you are? And I was like so, and she was cool. She's like, no, be yourself. What do I you know? What do I care? And you're right. She we ended up having a much more extended conversation, and she. She was like, she really is one of the coolest members of management that I've ever had in my career. I, I first of all, I don't think anybody I know who has got her position. I mean, like, she's like, I think the chief operating officer who would just show up and hang at the bar with everybody yeah. like that. I, I that's cool. don't think that's ever happened in my, I don't remember anybody of that stature. Hang, I mean, they'll come to boot camp. They will do a panel, they'll come to the, but, but I've never seen them hang out at the bar with us. Mm. That was, you know, so I, I mean, we're still employed, so I don't think I ruined anything, but oh, Steve, I mean. I was really embarrassed. I was like, oh, man, of course I'm well, not. At least you I'm weren't wearing your thing. pineapple shirt. Yeah. When you did I that. think I would have got pl- I, I, You know what? I think I would have got points there. I, I, you know what? My wife, you, get, oh, you know what? You guys would yeah, talk to my swingers. Wife. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, fine. I'm kidding. I'm I just giving that. you a hard time. It was a nice shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Mo, oh, thank you. Yeah. And we did have an intervention yes. with BJ. As the night went on, BJ, Wait, we got drunker happened? and drunker, and the conversation of you tucking in your T-shirt came up, and then it was an argument over whether or not people should tuck their T-shirts in. And then finally, we had to grab BJ and be like, we need to have a conversation. <laughs> and it was like, everybody from the convention was like, you can't tuck your shirt in. You're like, you had everybody against me. I was I mean, like, it wasn't everybody. intentional. It wasn't against you. They everybody. just all agreed with us. Everybody. It was, like, it was like, I really wanted to go on and do a hashtag anti, anti-tuck. Mm. I was like, this anti-tuck. is horrible. You guys should be all canceled. And it was great because then you come over, you're like, what? Uh, someone told me this. Is how, I agree it's weird, but someone told me. And we're all like, what? Your hairdresser? <laughs> and then all these radio people are like, he has a hairdresser? We're like, oh, I know. And your that daughter's like, worse. yeah, he sees the hairdresser every three weeks. And all the one goes, <laughs> why? <laughs> okay, you know what? Uh, these guys are all bald. Shaming, I mean, you guys to look this good, you really have to maintain it. Oh, yeah, you know, okay. it's, it's, you're on oh, the yeah, cutting yeah, edge, yeah. literally. Yeah, I'm done with you people. Well, I did notice you stopped tucking in your shirts after the intervention, so it worked. Well, because I like, look, if you have a regular, like, if you have a dress shirt, that's the now people do it tucked and untucked. It's like it's it, like it's 50 50, it seems, in the world. Yeah, that wasn't and, the debate, though. It was the t shirt, no, you're right. it was the t shirt, but they all told me to take the regular shirt Who's out, they? too. The people, you, were you there? They pulled my shirt out. The regular shirt I had tucked. They go, you look a lot better this way with the regular shirt untucked. I agree with that. I as was well. accosted, yeah, Steve. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but people just started. They were. T- I mean, I was really going to go. I, I was going to go get the teddy bear then on show everybody where they touched me and how it made me pain. Well, there was that one woman who was like extraordinarily horny in the radio convention. <laughs> like she was going up to every dude and flirting I did hear about this. hardcore, which I thought was the funniest thing. Here's what I want to <laughs> say. I, I I had conversations with that woman. And uh, I was the one. I was the unicorn. There was no behavior like that with me whatsoever. <laughs> you know, with her. I when you guys told me, "Hey, did you see that woman?" I go, "I sure did." And everybody had a story. That woman was just, I mean, all over us. She showed I'm up like, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I think I might have stopped it. I might have put a stop to that because I, I think it's because there was none of that with me at all. I was so, so impressed. I, I, I've, I've never seen you. someone like that, like, just, I don't give a crap. I'm flirting with everybody. You just throw right. out your cards wherever it's going to happen. And eventually, See, you'll, I, you'll win, I guess. If I, were, if I were her, that's what I would do. I mean, that's, that's the, great, the greatest thing in the world. If I had the power where it's like, you know what, I, chances are the, the place where I'm fishing, I'm going to catch a lot of fish, I would definitely do that. So I said, Steve, how excited were you for the magician guy with the shoe? And a lot of oh, people were like, Steve, yeah. Were you? Yeah, we had a, what was it? 
Not an he's, a, he's a mentalist. He's a mentalist. Joe yeah, Diamond. The world's Joe, greatest Joe mind Joe Diamond. Is what his Instagram says. Yes. So, yes. But it's very magic-like. And I had the time of my life. I've never been more happy at one of our convention lunches. Because it's usually a comic. And it's usually it's fun because it gets awkward. Mm-hmm. Whereas oh, this yeah. guy... It started off where like a lot of people seemed very skeptical of what he was he was going to do, and I just knew I'm like, there's no way this guy's not going to be great, like yeah. you know. But it, you got you got to ease into it. So he's he brought Joe up from our show. How crazy was that? Read Joe's mind. I know there's all like there's smoke and mirrors and stuff, but like when you get lost in that little world, the fantasy world of some of that stuff, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. That guy oh, was yeah. great. Oh, dude, uh, you know, I, I, I talked about it. I'm a big fan of Penn and Teller's Fool Us. And so, when, you know, so I know a little bit about the biz. But when a guy goes up there and does stuff and I'm like, I'm in the I know the biz a bit. I don't know how the heck he did that. And you see that with Penn and Teller's Fool Us. When somebody goes up there and does a trick where Penn and Teller go, we have no idea how you do that. That is so cool. And, you know, big props to Joe because he entertained that room. He did such a great job. The best is he sent me because we shared something. He sent me a direct message asking, like, hey, I saw you enjoyed the shoe part. Were there any other parts that you enjoyed? And I said, oh, the end was great but you probably already knew that i thought that oh yeah. i realized that as i got drunker i was direct messaging him the dumbest stuff <laughs> yeah. i can see and i'm sure he's never ever heard no. anybody say that ever no. in the history of being joe diamond my favorite yeah. part about that show was when i was sitting next to because they did it during our during our lunch so i'm sitting there eating my and joe joey is like i'm gonna get you on stage for the mind reader and i was like joe i really don't want to go on stage so then he like the mind reader looks directly at where joe and i were sitting he's like yep. you come up on stage and joe loses his mind he's like Get up there, Danny. The guy's like, no, not you. You. The and guy with the glasses, the, guy- the hat, and the maroon shirt. It's like, D- Joe, he just described you. I was <laughs> yeah. so screwed. And he got so angry immediately. He was like, I don't want to go up there. And I was like, exactly. But he yeah. was a sport and went up there. That's I was fantastic. so hungover, too. But I knew when I told him my name was Joe that I was screwed because Joe's known Joe's. So he's going to be able to read my <laughs> mind. <laughs> But, dude, they, he, at the end, when we all had a card, did, were you shocked when he was able to name all the numbers, I just, all the letters, all the diamonds? How the heck did he do that? Magic. Magic, man. <laughs> <laughs> he could read minds. There was a lot of parts where I'm like, I want a behind the scenes. I want a tutorial yeah. on what he just did because it was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it I is. I love that um, crap. I love all those kind uh, of magician, mind meeting. All that stuff is like some of my favorite things. Were you guys yeah. hyped when he was like, I'm going to read the, uh, the girl's naughty thought out loud to everybody? Her naughty memory. You just saw all the people that were standing get so scared. Yeah, I was, I was ready to hear it, but I, then I it misunderstood naughty. what naughty meant because well, I thought naughty was going to be naughty. No, no, but it's so I think so did everyone else in that convention. And then it was the most innocent thing I've ever heard. That of she stole life. a stapler. Yeah, from and her still yeah. uses it at her new job. And I'm like, that's the naughty thought. Was yeah. naughty enough. Come back to no, me. Really <laughs> Come wasn't. back to me. Yeah, I don't think. But you know, he's very smart. He uses that. He uses that adjective very well because he yeah. knows where everybody in the room's going. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, very titillating. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I, you know, the thing is, is I don't know if Joe Diamond, if he comes to towns and whatever, but if you ever see the name Joe Diamond, go see the show. It, it will be a great show. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. It is listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We're talking about our fun time in Chicago at our convention. And we'll be talking about whatever you want to talk about. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Calls and texts at 935. On the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. Nobody likes keeping track of a wallet full of credit cards with complicated rewards categories. And BECU members like Heather don't have to. With this card, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about it. I just use it and pay it. It's pretty simple. Keep things simple with the cashback visa from BECU. No more confusing categories. No more blackout dates. Just 1.5% cash back on every purchase. BECU. Power in people. Member compensated for participation. Cash advances and cash life transactions do not qualify as purchases. Contact BECU at 800-233-2328 for current product and rate information. 99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Romero in Indianapolis. Romero, are you listening on the Odyssey app? I'm not. I, I was hanging out with you, BJ, the last night, Friday night, my last night, actually, with oh. uh, Christina, with our mutual friend Christina, the blind guy. You'll remember me that way. Oh, Danny. <laughs> How are you, buddy? <laughs> What's oh. going on, guys? Oh. Listen, I, it was, it's, first of all, it's really interesting, right? It's, it's wild that I'm sitting here talking to BJ. I've, I've heard you for years. 
But never did I think I was going to be partying with your show at a BS club in Chicago. <laughs> Dude, it was so awesome you came out and hung with us, man. That was a blast. When you walked Dude. in, I lost my mind, man. It was amazing. It made me feel really good. You guys made me feel really welcome, and uh, just it was wild to be hanging out, hanging around with some uh, people who really killed the game. So, thank you so much for having me and making me feel a part of the family. It was such a great time to be able to uh, chop it up with you guys and and really get to uh, know you guys on a different level outside of radio and and get to know you personally. So, and Danny, it was, Danny was voted because Danny asked, uh, or, uh, "You probably like to go by Romero. I'll call you Romero, but I only I just need <laughs> no, Danny. Danny, the whole time. Danny is perfectly fine. It's, it's yeah. all good, my brother. So, yeah, so, that's so, how I was like when I first you said they. Said Romero was there at the club. I'm like, well, who's Romero? And then when you just said, I was like, oh, Danny, that guy, that, that was <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, Danny, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So Danny got up and asked a question, and he was like, the, the entire room just realized it's like, wow, this guy was voted like the best voice in radio. By the time he was done asking his question, it was just like, <laughs> it was it was amazing. And that's such a good dude. It really, you know, honestly, Danny, you had like, it was so fun hanging with you. You, you had such a great attitude, such a big heart. And I'm like, I was so happy a guy like you's in our industry because. Because, you know, it balances out the miserable people like me in the industry because you really need to have that yin and yang of like positivity <laughs> and negativity. And you definitely fill out, you know, the positivity in that one, brother. And, and how about how much fun was that club, dude? You know, it's it's interesting. The the club was a lot of fun, and uh, it, the security were a bunch of d bags. But yes. I, I, <laughs> for real, but the yes. it's what you make of it, right? It's literally every situation is what you make of it. And I was not going to let those people <laughs> ruin the time. We had such a great time. We were just drinking and having a good time, yelling, everybody, hyping everybody up who was dancing. It was a great time, man. Oh, the music was great, but you're right, dude. We had to go to like seven tiers of security, it felt like, just to get to where we were. And then no matter where we went, I felt like the security were just riding our butts, probably because we were the cheapos that were trying to steal tables from... <laughs> There were fifteen hundred dollar tables, and, and but the, whatever. And then there's guys like me who jumped up on the tables and then got yelled yeah. at. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody you, wanted to see you. Up there. You guys have to get with me privately to know who the which which girl it was that was hitting on him because uh, I, I didn't get hit on, and I'm I'm starting to feel a type of way. I'm starting to feel like it was because I am blind. She probably didn't know how to do it. She was like, "Oh my god, I don't know." Or was she know, hitting on you? Me. You didn't see it there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wasn't yeah. at the club. She wasn't at the club, so it was yeah. definitely that. So that wasn't the case. Yeah, yeah, she was not there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank uh, God. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what great, dude. She was grinding on you the whole time at the club. Oh, of course you were. Yeah. No wonder there was something happening down there. <laughs> there we go. That's it. We have a winner. We have a winner, ladies. Dude, that was like one of the highlights of as we're at the club. All of a sudden, you turn around, like, because every once in a while, different people from the radio uh, convention found out that we were there, so they they came in. But when you walked through, we were all just like, Danny's here. It was so dope, dude. You know, it, it really made me feel good. And it's so crazy because uh, that was my first uh, radio convention ever. I've been wanting to go to that convention specifically for the last 10 years. Oh, and uh, just, to, just to actually really, like, get my dream uh, fulfilled and be able to meet guys like you guys. And it was just such an incredible time. And I met so many other legends. I knew you guys mentioned uh, Dave Ryan. He was just recently coaching me uh, and listening to audio. And so just... The networking opportunities that came out of it is just mind blowing. I, I, I feel like I got my then. sight back. And I was very excited because I got to meet Dave Ryan's wife. That was, I mean, which was really it's like I was looking for him the whole convention. And the only that sounds one. creepy as all hell. Yeah, no, 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 right. no, no, I got to see I Dave know. Ryan's wife. <laughs> but uh, that's not the way I meant it to be. It, I, I meant it to be a joke because all along I was trying to find him to have a conversation with him. And then I end up, you know, just going, I'm looking around, I'm looking around. And then finally, the, where I'm in a conversation, I go, hi, how are you? What's your name? And she goes, hi, I'm, I'm his wife. And I'm like, I've been trying to find your husband like the entire convention. And I go, well, I guess I'm going to tell him I said hi. And, you know, just... <laughs> hey, Danny, can I ask you? I, I, I ask you a stupid question. By all means, you just say anything you okay. would like, man. We're family. Okay, cool. Because you just wow. said it was like I, I got my sight back. So, did you? Were you not? Were you born with sight, and then you lost your sight? So, I don't know your backstory. Yeah, no, so I was yeah. So quickly, I was I was uh, born with cataracts, the old people disease. That's what I always call it. Uh, and uh, I lost my sight in one of my eyes because I had a prosthetic. I have a prosthetic in one of my eyes. It's my right eye around two or three, and then I lost my sight on my left eye around five. So I've been pretty much blind since five. I luckily always say, thank God I remember color, because color, you can't describe color. 
Yeah. So oh, yeah. I was I was very lucky to to get an idea of what colors look like, what the rainbow look like. So I just so when I hear certain things, I'll know. Hey, he's got a blue shirt on, black pants. I I can picture that in my mind. I, yes. I can. And then I have another yeah. dumb question, and if you don't mind. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> so while well, I was sorry, drunk Danny. and I'm hanging with Danny, I was just like, man, I wonder what is like the, what is it like at a club where like you know it's there's a ton of people, there's loud music. What's that vibe like for somebody like yourself that can't see? So I was like, for an extended period of time while we were at the club, I had my eyes closed and I was moving. And I was like, I wonder if this is what it's like for Danny, but I didn't know you well enough to ask you. But now I feel like I feel like we I can ask you the stupid questions now. Oh, you can ask me anything you'd like. No, seriously. So uh, a lot of blind people, if you ask most blind people, they hate going to clubs. And, and the back. majority of that, I'm not, I'm not really a club going guy, uh, either, but I'm also not going to turn down an opportunity to, to party with radio people yes. who are just exactly. absolute degenerates and drunks. Uh, <laughs> same here. That's the last place I wanted to go, but I knew Sarah wanted to go, so I'm like, I'll go. Oh, you, yeah, of course. You guys were you know, drinking you are, at the convention? Yeah, yeah. What? Water. Okay, That's water. cool. Yeah. You guys are humanitarians, all of you. Oh my goodness! I mean, I did not know radio people party like that. Now I oh, know yeah. to to, to oh, definitely yeah. be prepared next year for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So what was the vibe like then for you? Like just being there? Like the, is it just like you just feel the music and yeah, just feel the vibe, man. And and also the energy of the people around me. Yeah. Like if 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 I know the people around me are pissed off and they're having a bad time, then I'm just not gonna have a good time because. Now the, 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 the mode is like not to have a good time. Everybody's just focused on being pissed off. But, uh, everybody kind of ignored, uh, all the crap that was going on and we still ended up having a great time. So I have a question for you, Danny, as well. Did you get a buy, bite of Joe's cookie that, uh, our friend Marie all of a sudden gave him in the middle of the a club? warm cookie? Can I tell you something? I'm so I I was shocked to hear I did not know about these cookies. <laughs> but when you earlier said that a random chick came up to you and, and wanted you to have a bite of her cookie and then you said that you took it, I was like, Are you insane? <laughs> In Chicago? What what is happening? Dude, can I ask a question? Because I just this just clicked in my brain. I forgot about this. Danny, what kind of cookie was it? I, I, it was Joey ate it. I Joey ate it. He doesn't even remember, though. Yeah. It was chocolate chip. You oh, think? my God, dude. Is it your I'm cookie? Kidding. No. Somebody in the street randomly handed me a chocolate chip cookie. It was wrapped. <laughs> and I brought what it, the hell? And I brought, it, I brought it to the pizza place we went at because my, my food was going to take longer. So I'm like, I'll have my dessert first. And everybody had the same response you did, Danny, at the table. They're like, are you just going to eat like a cookie from a random street person? I'm going, <laughs> it's the Shea wrapped. Boys, man. They'll just eat anyone's cookie. Anyone's cookie. I mean, it's yeah. And so, I mean, I wonder if Marie, this, Marie, you know, Danny, we know Marie. I wonder if she just randomly Love just Marie. had like cookie, like no. cookie warriors running around with these things. I, you, you know what? I, she, as she told me afterwards, she said, no, somebody randomly handed it to her. And, and she she's was like, just I'm like, not eating it. Yeah, I'll give it to Joe. Yeah, yeah, and so Joe was like, like, ah, cookies. Joey, how about you and I? We, how about randomly the two, the two relatives, you know, the father, son dopes are ones eating street cookies from people we don't know. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. It was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> there a is time. a phenomenon. That we need to find out what's going on in Chicago and why people are just handing out cookies. Hey. Watch it be like some dumb thing about a local sports team, and it's like what they're doing to to promote. I'm still alive, <laughs> Danny. I and it was a damn good cookie. I have to tell you, it was good. <laughs> it's amazing how well, it's still warm. Eat. You're baldy as hell for eating it, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you baldy award of the year for sure. That. Even as a guy like myself who was eating random people's french fries at the one radio mixture that we went to, and I was just like just picking <laughs> fries off of people's plates, I wouldn't eat a random person's cookie. Bro, you and That's me both, I, we ate those fries. That well, was fantastic. I just assumed it was someone we knew, and I was like, ah, fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> also, can I just say, Danny's etiquette at the uh, buffet has not changed. He still will just dip his hands in all the food. Yeah, that was Danny, mean. you know, don't do that. Yeah. I mean, Danny V, I should yeah, say. Yeah, not Danny yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, leave it up to the blind, Danny, because I need to know exactly what's in those damn bins. I need to know what's in those <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if you were at the club and someone just like put a cookie in your mouth? <laughs> you can't see it coming, and all of a sudden you're like, what? Why do I taste chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and who did that? Who put that in my mouth? It was That's awesome. Real though. question. At the at the dance club, when I look over, it's like you, and it was uh, our buddy Tarzan from San Diego, and you guys yeah. just just killing it on the dance floor. I was like, man, this is this, what are like just a fun just random group of people all together for a love of radio and we all just had a blast together. And and you know what's so funny is I, go ahead. Go ahead, Danny, go ahead. I uh, know I, I always feel like super self conscious about dancing too because being blind you don't know if you're dancing right, right? Like 
so there's this idea. So, but the, and then I had a, a you know a mutual friend of ours, uh, Christina, and she was like, "Oh well, you're definitely dancing a lot better than a lot of the people here. <laughs> a lot of the dudes specifically, me and Joe so. especially. Yeah. yeah, you know what? There, <laughs> you guys were dancing better than some of the girls there too, because there was just a lot of girls who did not look very enthusiastic about dancing. So <laughs> some of them are just sitting at the bar, being like, "I just want to be seen." And I'm like, "Wow, you look like you're having so much fun here." Yeah. Uh, but also, I, I just, did you, Danny? Did you hear the thing about the guy that fell asleep in the booth behind us at the club? I did not hear. That. All of a sudden, Steve and I just turn around and I see this guy, a bigger guy, and just asleep in one of the booths. Not like passed out. Like, oh, we should check on him. Like he was legit just napping. Just oh, napping. he was napping. I gave yeah, him the biggest day. high five when he got up and it was like, you know, time to go. And I was like, <laughs> I love right, you, man. man. He you fell asleep what? at the club. You can sleep at the club. I respect that. Yeah. That's fantastic. He would have fit in at, co- at our convention because I'm telling you, nobody got sleep. Okay. Nope. For, for like for like 72 hours, barely sleep. Yeah. It was, <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, get up, coffee, and rally. Let's yeah. go. Danny, so good, so good to meet you, man. I hope you go to next year's because we're going to be, we'll be at next year's. And uh, so, you know what? You can be, you can be in our family for a long time. You know, this, this, this crazy family of radio people where we all get together and all share this insanity. And I was so happy to have you there, buddy. BJ, Miggs, everybody on the show, you guys are, are definite legends uh, in the business. And uh, I respect what you guys do. And thank you so much for being so welcoming and so giving. Yeah, thank, Seriously. Thanks for calling. And next year, yeah, just, uh, fair warning, though, the drunker I get, the dumber the questions will be. So I'm just sure. <laughs> <true. laughs> no worry. I'm going to get you sloshed. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're going to have a great time, Danny. We should make a bit. We should make a bit out of it where uh, we get we get Joe super drunk and uh, and we'll see what dumb questions he uh, asked the blind guy. Oh, yeah. and yeah. and one hundred percent. Yeah, because you know what? Uh, pretty much, we we that, that that's the brand. That's the branding. There goes uh, Danny Romero, Romero uh, in Indy. Um, that was cool. You do. called in. Yeah, yes. how about awesome. that? You know what? It's I mean, you know, usually I wonder if anybody wants to talk to us. This guy went and paid, you know, paid his cell phone plan and be able to call us up. That's nice. <laughs> he got a cell phone just hey, to wait, talk to us. Yeah, he got yeah. a cell phone. Again, it's a burner, I'm sure. But you know what? <laughs> he doesn't want us to know his actual number. Yeah, that's not, we're, we, we're gonna try to call it back. It's gonna be gone. He's on the only pay phone in India. Let's right. call us. Yeah. Otherwise, like Friday night, two in the morning, like Steve, stop yeah. calling me about stupid questions about being blind. Like, yeah, like, I, 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 I put up with it at the convention. I'm not putting up with it every day. <laughs> This was a huge mistake of my life. Yeah, all righty. Well, let's see. Uh, we've uh, we got a big question that has to be answered. This one here might actually solve a lot of problems in humanity. Uh, what do Ryan Castle and a mannequin have in common? You know, I'm going to tell you at 9.52 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. And now... The Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a mannequin have in common? It was a movie about me in the 80s. Yeah. Great one? freaking movie. Yeah. I mean, maybe not. Wow. Mine, mine uh, was called Ryan Learns to Use the Big Boy Potty, and my parents made it. Aww. Wow. Big star, by the way, in that movie, Steve. Was it Big Steve Gutenberg? Uh, well, I was thinking the woman that played the mannequin. If I'm not oh, yeah, mistaken, it was uh, Kim Cattrall, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, it's Samantha from Sex in the City, but that was before I think that happened, and she was a mannequin. <laughs> what a great premise for a movie! They need to reboot that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hollywood. I'm surprised I haven't mannequin done it. three. Oh. This time it's vengeance. It's Andrew yes. McCarthy and I Steve Gutenberg. Yeah. They had the same oh. kind of hairdo. There's a delivery guy in the Philippines. He got pulled over on his motorcycle the other day because his passenger didn't have a helmet on. And photos of the traffic cop are going viral because it was just a funny misunderstanding as it was a very realistic oh looking God. mannequin and he was delivering to somebody and the cop was like, dude, she's got to have it. Oh, wait a minute. How, That's pretty funny. How bad is that? How many people have tried the mannequin thing to get into the HOV and nobody ever buys it? But this cop totally bought that that was a real person on his bike. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. So, well, there you go. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Everybody needs a friend. Uh, uh, Ryan Castle, I don't know how hot he is, but his 12-pack is, and that's up next. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. 
Here's another question from a listener. I have a mountain of credit card bills and consumer debt. Can I still keep my house if I file bankruptcy? Yes, you almost always can keep your home and, and your house, your car in a, in a bankruptcy. Depending on what type of bankruptcy you file uh, would depend on whether or not, for example, you can keep your vehicles if you have payments on them still. You can almost always keep your home if you're current on the payments on your home, even in full bankruptcy. In Chapter 13, uh, you can also keep those items. If you're behind on your house, you could catch your house payments up in a Chapter 13, take off a second mortgage in a Chapter 13. So keeping your, your primary assets like a home and car is almost always possible in bankruptcy. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening. Are you ready to rock your career? Then get ready to rock Accelerate. Powered by NetView, this nationwide conference with the largest gathering of Vertifor users is coming to Austin, Texas, May 7th through the 10th. Network with the top thought leaders in insurance. Get all your system questions answered by Vertifor professionals at the Tech Hub and learn invaluable tips from those rocking the insurance industry. Don't be the only one to miss out. Register today at netview.org. netvu.org. Let's rock Accelerate.